I think before we go too deep on Europe, let's uh, break down the matches of uh, day nine of, of this stage. Right, let's start there. All right. Let's have a look. Nadi versus Weibo game one. I need to remind myself a little bit what happened here. I think Weibo completely griefed draft. And I think that's why this game was so one-sided. So basically, Nico Rumble, Kalista Ban, Zaya Javan Maokai. So basically, they just strengthened Oriana with the Javan Ban on red side, which is very bad. I think an evolution that we see is that Javan Maokai will be open on red more and that trades will be set up. Um, I think in a lot of cases, what you get to see is that um, teams... Uh, are going to look to blue side Draven to strengthen the Oriana first pick because in other cases teams that first pick Oriana the answer of being Javan Rumble is very very strong for red side uh, but nevertheless Oriana gets first pick Renata Glask and Poppy gets locked in and then Aphelios Kaysante so here the Renata Glask lock in and the Poppy I think that it's a bit premature here the Renata Glask um, it, teams are banning blue side Renata Glask because um, it is going to be the answer into most of the supers you want to blind, and also it pairs super well with Kalista. But if Kalista is out and picking Renata Glask only into Oriana showing is rather weak in my opinion. I think the key champion here, if you are in Weibo's shoes to contest, would probably be the Aphelios if you wanted to cut the enemy in half, uh, but instead they went with Renata Glask. Considering Renata doesn't have Aphelios or Kalista, the good AD pairings with Renata Considering the enemy is going to be able to counterpick support like they did here with the Milio, uh, is a very, very bad lock in, in my opinion. Renata has a very clear weakness, and that is long range. And if the enemy carries as Oriana Aphelios, this is already a very difficult game for Renata Glass to maneuver. I think that Poppy Flex can be strong here if you anticipate the Cassante blind pick, uh, which isn't completely crazy. This is something that Oscarini plays, and I said this on stream. I think that uh, in the end, um, in the end here, right, uh, I think that if they sent Poppy into Kaysanta and they picked Azir on 3, I think they could have saved the draft. But instead they go into 4-5, allowing this Oriana to become even stronger. So Oriana is already very good into 1-2-3, and also Javan is out, and Azir and Syndra is out, leaving only a Silas pick on 5. So out of the 1-2-3, uh, this is a very, very losing draft wave. Insanely losing. The way to save it here is to pick Azir on 3, send Poppy into the top lane against Kaysante, look to pick something like Ivan and then play like Jinx on 5. Something like this could be like a way for them to, to maneuver this draft, but they completely murdered themselves when they allowed the enemy to ban more against Oriana, and then they picked Aatrox, which is perfectly fine into Kaysante, but like Aatrox is the only champion that has validity here in my opinion. Uh, Sejuani so gets locked in and then Silas here on 5. It's like here, probably, I would say that Akali is a better lock-in than Silas, but there's nothing that you can pick that can actually save the draft. The reason I prefer Akali over Silas is because I don't think Silas has good ultimates here. I think that the Giovanni ult gets countered by Milio, and uh, the rest of the ult are rather mediocre, and then after, at the end of the day, you're playing Silas into Kisanta Aphelios. I said this on Twitter, uh, this is for sure the biggest outdraft that we saw, uh, in at the tournament, besides the the champions that uh, uh, besides you know the the champs that um, like with the, the cases when people pick Belveth, right? The the G two Belveth case and the C nine Belveth case were probably like on par with the level of of, of draft here. Uh, this game, plain and simple, I think that um, uh, Fnatic could have done anything and still won. Yo, Gilligan. Good to see you, brother. Let's take a look at what happened in this game, because I barely remember. We, we have some time to digest this. I, I was one day off, and now we're back in action. Yeah, basically, Weiwei, he needs to create chaos in this game. Uh, this, this particular game is so shit. It's so shit for Weiwei to play. He needs to create uh, chaos in this game somehow. He just has to try to break the enemy team somehow. So obviously he walks all the way around to dodge the ward and then look for that level 3 gank of mid. But like, this is the only way for him to try to find some traction in this game. Um, he, he tried to go for the gank and then the Silas uh, doesn't hit the chains. 
You know, I think if you if they comboed it here, maybe they could hit the chain and chunk humanoid a little bit more, and maybe look for lethal over of the flash. But uh, the combo is not good, and they burn humanoid's flash. He now crosses the vision, and it allows Sejuani now to look for invade and pressure. He helps humanoid crash the wave, and then he's, he's looking to pressure the blue. Isn't this the classic Diebot level three? I'm out here kind of poppy game. Like this, this, this game is. This is the worst draft of the tournament one. This is this is unlosable. I tweeted out the same. I said, yo, this is... If Fnatic don't win this game, they can go home right away. Like, don't play the rest of the games. I don't play the second game if, if Fnatic loses this draft, you know? I, for me, it's like relying on the bot dive as well. When enemy has melee or failures, I think it's also tricky because I don't think that they are so decisive in bot that the trade that happened to Trimby, for example, when he dropped to 1 HP, as you can see here, that they can look to dive. I don't think that the matchup is like decisive enough. And then it's like here, Razork steals the smite, gets the campy, then he's contesting Poppy out. Razork plays good that he looks to challenge Poppy first. Uh, and then of course he backs off through topside because there's a bot gap. Here, Crisp completely lost his mind. He like flashes on Noah, who has cleanse, and then this is the weapon switch for Noah. Gets the root gun. Crisp dies, and then honestly, the game is just over. I, I'm not even kidding. I know that people like to speak hyperbolically. You know, it's like the players in my chat, even myself, we say, "Ah, this game is lost. This game is over." What we really mean most of the time is we're saying, "Yo, this game is a very tough spot," and if the team that is it's over for executes well, then uh, then they can they, they win right that's usually what we mean when we say the game is over it's like the game is over unless this team makes some mistakes right and now we continue humanoid did a fantastic job of recognizing when the slow pushes were happening i think he was managing wave super super good i think humanoid really really was in form i really like this lane gang from razorkovic crispy of course he uh, has um, he has uh, no flash. Good lane gang from Razork. I think Humanoid and Razork were honestly really, really insane. You know, really, really insane. Like they did a very good job in the series. I think Razork and Humanoid, and I'm honestly quite proud of what they accomplished in this tournament. Uh, this is just uh, plain and simple. You know, you have to do something about this poppy. Uh, we see this happen way too often. This is just a robbery. The setup is good from Fnatic, uh, but uh, you know, no CC. No oscar inning, like e and then w to block the ult, you know, nothing. Uh, I think this could have just been uh, plain and simple, uh, well, much better played. Felios has uh, dream conditions in this game. And um, then finally, we got this gank on mid where Jahu, his E gets cancelled by the Q. And then, of course, the flash uh, gets pulled away from Jahu as well. There's no way for him... There's no way for him to actually, like, get out of this ultimate with flash. He needs to, like, flash towards humanoid, but... He would just die anyway there because face rush of humanoid and then the chains or the chase of the Sejuani would be enough and it would be the size of the Salas. There's no boots, there's a full inventory. Uh, it's GG, you know. And we continue. Let's just check if there's anything else in the game that's happening. I don't think there was anything interesting in this game that happened. The game is just completely lost for four wave, honestly. Humanoid once again, just dodging the ganks. Bro, like he, he was getting ganked left and right. Like Humanoid had a monstrous game. Because where we tried to gank him four, five, six times and Humanoid didn't let go of the pressure to Jahu. You know, it's, it's, it's not the, the question of, it's like dodging ganks, the art is not, the art is not in the, the idea of not dying. The art is not in the idea of not dying, the art is in trying to squeeze as much as possible and at the same time not dying. And as you dance between inting and smurfing, the, finding the line is, is, is very, very difficult. Because in this game, he maintained pressure on Jahu, he didn't have room to roam, and also at the same time, he dodged all the gangs, which is very, very well done from Humanoid, you know? Uh, credit should be given what it's due, 100%. But I repeat, 
I repeat, Weibo's draft is so garbage. It's so bad. It's insanely bad. Uh, if it's if it's unclear as to why it's bad, is that they are losing early, they get outscaled, and at the same time, they are much weaker in 5v5 fights. You know? Very, 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 very clear, you know? That they are weaker in 5v5 fights, and Silas has no good ultimates, Poppy has no value, like, what kind of dashes is Poppy blocking this game, you know? Even when Poppy ults, gets dream ults like this, you know, when he ults three people out, it's not this decisive enough, you know, it's like, way away needs to smurf out of his mind. It's the worst Poppy game possible, but at the same time, he, he played the best Poppy out of anyone we see that at this tournament, you know, in terms of W usage, in terms of R usage. Even though way away didn't land any of the ganks mid, this is like the best fucking Poppy gameplay I saw all tournament long. I like the fact that Fnatic were contesting this, posturing forward, even though they're 4v5, and the Shy is doing the, the Shy Classic. Like this is the main criticism towards the Shy, if anything, at this tournament, is that he isolates him, isolates him big time uh, when it comes, isolates himself uh, big time in preparation for objectives and doesn't tether good enough to the opposition. He did this on Kesante, did this now on Aatrox. He's had a couple of games where he did this. Otherwise, the Shy has been really fucking good, I think. Doesn't he play like this in LPL too? He, he, has, he has done way more egregious shit in the LPL, I'm not gonna lie. But okay, I think this game already speak, spoke for itself. I think I covered what uh, what is important. Uh, we can continue to the second game. All right, game two, we able to go to blue side and uh, Fnatic. Uh, now they ban Nico, Rumble, and then they follow up the Azir ban with Oriana ban. Here, I think Fnatic had the intention of picking Aphelios into Zaya and then trading Oriana for Zaya. I think this was their intention because. Humanoid likes to play Syndra, and then they would trade to make sure that um, Mr. Noah has a comfortable matchup. So, Mauka gets first pick, the go-to uh, blind pick here, especially with Javan out. This is some value for Weibo. Kalista, Kaysanta. So I thought here Fnatic is going to go for the Aphelios. I thought they're going to stick to comfort. Um, or, I thought at the min minimum, I thought at the minimum... Uh, they would play a case here where they're like inviting the Renata steal away and then play a range support. I was so certain here that they're going to play Soraka bot and pull up a rogue classic when they won the LEC. I thought that was the whole intention. Uh, and instead we just have Kalista Rel and, um, you know, it's not terrible. It's really not terrible, but you just kind of have higher expectations, um, you know, because... At least for me, I don't, I don't rate Noah that highly. I'm not gonna lie. I think that when he's playing Aphelios, he's really good. I think he had a really good nine regular split game, but then after that, I feel like he's been a passenger to the humanoid Razork project, you know. And um, his Kalista didn't hit the mark either. So. Kesante goes locked in blind. I think that uh, the best champions of the Shy are Kesante and Rumble. And this uh, allows you to also potentially counterpick here on three. I think that you can consider against Crisp to pick Kalista Renato yourself. I think this is something that teams are afraid of because it's a very lethal combination. And I think, uh, you know, there was no value here in giving a enemy the Renata glass, you know. Avelio gets, uh, gets locked in and then Cinder on three. Basically... Humanoid recognized that he needs to play mages. He's only playing mages. He's playing Oriana, Azir, Syndra. This is where he's impactful. This is also uh, where he plays super, super well. So it's all cool. They ban Poppy for the sake of Kalista and Kesante. I think that's normal, even though the enemy is unlikely to play it. Uh, the Shy has played the top in the past, I believe. So it's a good ban, I think. And then Akali. And then Nautilus Vi gets banned at the Gorilla on 4 to pair together with Kalista. Uh, Talia Nar gets locked in. 
I don't think this is like some crazy 4-5. I think Syndra is very happy to play against Talia, but Kalista needs to play against Talia Rocks. And then here, uh, Lee Sin on 5. I think Lee Sin here on 5 makes sense, considering your lanes. You have Rel support, Kalista. I think I kind of uh, I kind of like Lee Sin here. I don't mind Lee Sin at all. I think that um, Ivan could be played, but... I think I think Leeson is good honestly with what they've chosen. And the main question is if there's like room for something else in a world where they pick Soraka. It's like would you want to play Soraka in this game? That's the only question, but Soraka isn't like super exciting, I would say. Uh let's take a look at the game. I think that Leeson on five is uh it's probably on five. On five, it's it's like it's good, and then the main question is: Can you piece together a draft here where Kalista and Soraka is picked? What is then the best five pick, right? Uh, like if you have Soraka here against Renata Glass with Kalista, what is then the best five pick into what the enemy has chosen? Then it's like more in the direction of Ivan being better. I feel like. Because like Lee, Soraka is pretty shit, I think. That you don't want to play. And then probably you want like a tank on 5. But then you're playing like Sejuani with Syndra and that's a lot worse. So it's like the pairings with Soraka support just aren't exciting enough, I think, here. I understand why they didn't go. Wukong looks good against Mao and Aphelios? No, I don't think you want to play Wukong here. I think Wukong against the likes of I think this is a very bad Wukong spot. It's like um it's it's a very bad Wukong spot, you know. I think this uh, Baku is a bit of a limitation of the fanatic way, you know. It's like they really want humanoid on mage, you know. It's like here, like if you're playing like Ari Maybe you have other options, you know, and this is something mid laners would play, right? Um, things like this, you know. But this is just humanoid, he wants to play mages at this tournament. Uh, let's take a look at the game, let's, let's see what's up in the game. I don't remember. Thank you very much, AZ92, I appreciate that. It's, it's, it's weird, right? Take a look at this game. Who we'll see some graves during worlds? Probably not. It's only good on live because pet damage kills with armor and MR. And um, graves gets a lot of armor and MR. This was very nice from Razork. Very beautiful. He did uh, two topside camps across, dodged the ward. Really nice, got pinged out. This is really, really good. Really, really insane. Beautiful gank timer, Razor, crisp flash. Very nice, you know? Really, really nice. The Q miss doesn't matter. They get the advantage. Really, really nice from... Um, the, the, the pathing was, was absolutely beautiful here from, from Razor. How are you doing, Jonas? Good to see you, my friend. This is also super nice. Jao had no flash from before. It's like Fnatic was so winning. They were about to 2 0 Weibo Gaming. Super, super winning. I think the Shy, the shy started really, really bleeding uh, Oscarine in drive very early on in the game. Really, really early on in the game. Um, and this trade here is super, super massive uh, because Light gets to shuriken it up and. Uh, Noah instantly flashes and he drops a lot of HP and also use Kalista ult. Like this, this type of shit is not allowed to happen. So 
Like lane wise, I have to say that um, I think bot lane was very underwhelming at World, World Championship. I'm, I'm not gonna lie. I think I think AD carries as a whole were quite underwhelming uh, when it comes to to Europe, which was true at MSI too. Like people are so hyper focused on top lane that this is a discussion that doesn't get talked about enough. But I think that um, AD carries really are lacking. Uh, but nevertheless, this is a terrible trade. This is such a big swing. And this was a very, very big swing. And uh, and uh, this impacts the matchup so much. No Flash, no Callisto ult. You know, this gives so much breathing room. And the last thing you want to do to give your enemy breathing room, you know? You don't want to give you breathing room at all. Uh, Aphelios' conditions are better than Callista. And um, this is going to snowball further, right? Maokai goes through bot and a really big crucial moment here that really slowed down the game. Uh, really, really slowed down the game here is um, the fact that Fnatic are playing through mid and Zhao has to respect. But something, something that Talia can do in order to force the enemy to push mid and not her contesting the neutral waves is that she can just hover with ultimate and then connect to fights, right? She also has TP. So even though Aphelios, Syndra and Lee Sin have Pryo, uh, Talia just needs to make sure that uh, she is, she plays on the wave and uh, doesn't get uh, doesn't get killed by ganks. You know she has Ward on top side, so he needs ho he's hovering top side too. And now Malka is crossing to bot to make sure that Weibo bot lane can pressure, so they can cross into Drake in case the enemy starts it. Right? This is so crucial. A small detail here, but it's keeping a stranglehold and equalizing the game when Talia is really bleeding. Right? They found advantage through bot, even though Kalista had kill, they burnt her flash, they burnt her ultimate, and that led into Weibo having a favorable position on bot, and then, of course, Mauka has a way to play through. They are playing Kalista Rel, and they don't have control over bot lane, while Syndra and Lee Sin have complete domination over 2v2 mid. So the mistake from before when they face checked was so crucial, so crucial. And now Weibo, all they're doing is, they are hovering in this space to make sure that if the enemy starts Drake, they're going to rock and roll, right? This is crucial. And then eventually here, Leeson even lets up. Leeson is crossing into topside and they are crashing a big wave. So they are checking what the, how the enemy is going to be playing, right? Zhao is basing to have ideal conditions in connection with this Drake. And to be able to TP to this fight with the Lost Chapter, you see his base timer, very nice in unison with the, what the bot lane is doing. But Leeson and Syndra are letting go of the pressure, and they are not looking to actively contest this. So already the fact that they get this Hextech Drake, and they are playing the composition that scales better, is crucial. You have Leeson, Syndra, big dominations over the 2v2 mid, really nice base timer here from Jahu to match, and then a very, very good control over the bot lane. And you know, if you're playing this red side composition, you are very, very early game centric, very early game heavy. You cannot, you cannot fall for this. You cannot give this up. This is very, very bad. Even though something like this doesn't lead to a kill, cleanse is gone, ult is gone. This makes Weibo's bot lane have all of the freedom in the world to play. I like Weiwei so much, honestly. Weiwei has impressed me so fucking much. In all of the nonsense that Weibo have been doing at this tournament, Weiwei is the guy that makes it seem fucking clean, by the way. Really, really nice. Top lane as well, the bleeding started so fucking early. Nar already has Trinity Force, and he continues. I'm a big fan of Weiwei. I think Weiwei, for me, has been the best performing jungler, really. Weiwei is really, really, like, fantastic. I, really care. I don't really care about internet issues in Busan, I'm not gonna lie. Like, who cares about an issue that plagues all of the teams? That's my take. Yeah, it's an issue, but everyone suffers from the same issue, so... I don't really care, you know? That's, that's my take. Alright, let's look at the situation here. Aphelios is basing, 
Well, he's staying on the bot wave. Not sure what the fuck Crisp is doing here. I think Crisp is just trolling. All right. I think he's just straight up trolling here. I don't think there's anything to uh, anything to even say about it. I think he's just straight up running it down. Malka is on top side doing camps. Aphelios is on the bot wave with vision. There's nothing pressuring him, you know. I'm curious. Why are you saying Kisant is bleeding when he's almost even in CS? How is, how is he even? He has, enemy has Mythic. Enemy has Mythic finished. And he has lost platings. He's, he's, he's bleeding. Light still has um, uh, Q here and Red Weapon, but uh, they found enough damage to kill Light. Uh, but Trimby dies for it, of course, and the Shy TP'd. But so this is perfectly fine for the Shy because he can just start pushing and then they can match Aphelios to top. Most of the time, I think Aphelios just wanted to look for base here. He was just waiting for gold uh, till item. And this, of course, is. Uh, Perk said it on the Coast stream. It's like. Humanoid is really fucking good, but he finds ways to die in the weirdest ways possible. There's a very weird way to die, you know? Dumb ways to die. Just like, he could walk like three steps to his turret and then his base would just be fine. But just the fact that he didn't uh, makes him so killable. And it's uh, just a bit funny, you know? And then it's like this flash. <laughs> Lazy recalls indeed, my friend. All right. Here, let's take a look at this. I don't remember the situation. So before I say here, let's let's take a look at what's what's cooking. Kisant is punching bot turret with TP, and Fnatic have Syndra here in isolation. That's the only problem. This is a good heist. This is a very good heist here from Fnatic. They go into topside to cover the Syndra's push, and then they recover into mid. I think they over over postured here though. I don't know what this over posturing is here though, because it's like I think it's fine that they have it one time, but they need to cross back into mid. And here they are refusing to cross back into mid. Ignar is just punching their mid turret for free. Fnatic's top side, they showed. Here I think that Weibo are just trolling. Um, the key, key moment here that is so crucial for Fnatic is the moment Aphelios shows on top turret. In reality here, I think that Weibo should be in this area. They need to give up River. Because right now, Nara is showing. But the fact they don't give up River, Razork snaps the moment Aphelios shows. There's a really, really good moment here. They, they killed Talia. Talia had Flash. You know, Razork playing this mechanically beautiful. Really, really nice. And this lines up perfectly with the Drake. And the Aphelios is on the top side, he's lost on the map, Syndra was 1v2ing them. And uh, Fnatic should be able to win this out. They get the Drake and Syndra 1v2ed on top and forced enemy bot into base. Really, really nice. Yeah. Weibo just like, um, they traded mid turret for bot turret. Uh, but then on the 4v4, they lost the space after Syndra pushed top. And uh, Nar was hitting the turret. So the person with the advantage was hitting the tower and they needed to just back off and defend the Felios to make sure he doesn't get dove. That's why I wanted them to retreat into their own blue side jungle. Because if they go back into mid, then the Felios will get dove. And that would be terrible, right? Let's take a look at what's happening more in this game. This is like, still, Fnatic needed to snowball. These two kills that they got in River were very very good. Very good. It was very messy, but it worked somehow. Not sure what happened here, but somehow they made it out, you know?
I don't think it's so easy to South Nash. There's two TPs from Fnatic, and uh, I, I don't think it's that easy to South Nash. I think they can lose the game if they South Nash at 20 minutes. I don't think it's so decisive here. Like, keep in mind, Light also doesn't have the right guns. I don't think they can do Nash here. So I, I disagree with that point. Yeah, Fnatic just kind of played it the worst way possible. Now I remember this moment. I'm thinking that blue side is complete psycho. But it's like... Fnatic are just inviting the situation. They need to stop the Nash, but they're trying to win the game. <laughs> I, I forgot about this completely, guys. I forgot about the situation completely, bro. I completely forgot about the situation. I forgot about this moment in the game. Oh my lord. I forgot how bad this was. The thing is, all I want here from Fnatic is for them to just play on Syndra spells and then to push the enemy off, but they're just hitting the fucking Nash for no reason. And they're keeping it aggroed. And in my mind here, they can do a little bit more of a conservative TP and look to, 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 to pressure and then it would have been fine. I think this is, this is... This is crazy. This is really nuts, I think. I'm trying to look at the timing here because Oscarinian goes, right? Oscarinian goes when Syndra E is down. I think if, 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 if the Syndra E was up, I think this could have been a really good engage. But I think the fact that Syndra E was already used to poke the Maokai, I think that this was uh, very bad. The timing of the engage. Because the punish isn't there, you know? The punish isn't there. The carpet, Kisante, you know? Could have been a lot better, you know? Trimby as well, he just wastes his spells and takes damage. It's like Trimby really runs it down here in terms of his usage. And then Raza goes back into the pit. And like the, I think the engage from Oscarini, the problem with it is the fact that Cinder is down. And then of course Trimby, Trimby use, use of spells is, is very bad. I have to say, I have to say the Nash start is good. The Nash start is good. I, I think that in terms of how polarizing the compositions are, I think this is very hard for, for Fnatic to actually face check them. Now that I look at it again. At first I thought it's crazy because there's double TP, you know. Uh, but for Weibo to force this situation, I think it's pretty clever and smart. There can be no flash, no ult, no Karista ult. It actually adds up very fast. I think that uh, uh, chatter from before, you have a, you have a fair point. Yeah, Phyllis had the right guns, and uh, definitely. I don't remember much of this game, I'm not gonna lie, so it feels like I'm rewatching uh, the, the same game again. Uh, but after this, as mentioned, Fnatic's composition needs a snowball. Uh, this leading to Nash and uh, Blue Side being ahead is, is, is super GG. Like this, this is super, super winning now. Kalista is so weak, and um, Fnatic's composition just straight up falls off. Really, really falls off. I think in a lot of cases, 
Oscarini over Poshut. I don't think that he really. I don't think he really positioned well in some of these fights. I think he's taking uh, a lot of damage for free, and I don't like that. You know, I think that he could have done a better job. Um, this is not uh, necessary. I think. Not necessary. He's taking a lot of free damage, and I think that they are keeping the Drake in a spot that's better for blue side. Is Kalista like a Kali and uh, need top teams to, to play her well? Yeah. I think Kalista. I don't think this is a bad Kalista draft because they have Lee and Syndra to be too mid jungle. It's just that the moment you are losing with Kalista in terms of how you manage the waves, Kalista is very similar to Rumble in a lot of ways, right? Is that if she can't stand on the wave and fight her way out of any situation, she's useless. Completely useless. Because she doesn't do anything. If you make one mistake with Kalista and you fall behind for that, there is no comeback mechanic for you. No comeback mechanic for you uh, at all. Kind of like Kate. Well, Kate, Kate has a cushion, right? Because Kate can like convert the game at three items because she has very good scaling, right? Kate's scaling is very, very strong. It's like the best example of a great Kalista game is, of course, the JDG game, right? Uh, the JDG game against Billy Billy, this game, they really committed to uh, the idea, right? They really committed to the idea. Big microphone speaking. Right. How about now? Is it better? How about now? I, I lowered the gain. I lowered the gain a little bit more. Maybe it's now it's like a little bit uh, better. Yeah. Too much? Okay, let's do in between. 18. Oh, I accidentally clicked Yoshik. Oh, we can't hear you. All right, let's. I'll just do it. 21. 21 game. All right. Yeah, as mentioned, the game is now over. And now the, the most controversial game overall is uh, game number three. Uh, so the thing is, people are talking shit about the Alistair pick, but the issue is the fact that they have the first pick of failures. That's the issue. The issue is that they are first picking our failures. Plain and simple, that's the problem. I, th I think, you know, Noah's a good kid, you know, he only had one split in the LEC. I don't want to, like, I don't want to create, like... Like here, first pick Mauka is the way every time. Plain and simple. First pick Mauka is 100% the way every time. It's 100% the pick. There is no support pick that is going to save your lane for 5. Is, is it even Noah's decision? Well, the thing is, we know Noah. Noah didn't want the Phileas first pick either. I don't know why we have so much information on what Noah wants and what he doesn't want. Like, why does he talk and whine about this publicly if he did? I think plain and simple, it's like, just first pick of failures puts you in quite the hole. And if the enemy is capable of playing Caitlyn, the thing is, it's like they are surprised by the Kate. They didn't know Caitlyn's gonna come out here and they got fucked by it. Plain and simple. A lot of hindsight Andes would say, yo, you should have just... You should have just fucking uh, banned Kate. But... The thing is, let me tell you this, okay? Let me tell you a very simple fact about the game right now. Kaisa, Zaya, Aphelios. 380 carries that are played. Most of the games, they are very, very counterable. I said this on day one before Swiss even started. It's like when teams begin to play Caitlyn, Ziggs, Ash, you are going to fucking have a hard time. I'm telling you. You're going to have a very, very hard time. I'm, I'm, I don't know. I don't know what, what they said in interviews. But why the fuck are they even talking about this in interviews? It's like... 
I think it's 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 like you you fucking lost as a team. You don't fucking go out and go against your team at the end of the tournament. I think this is very sick. I like well, why are they sitting there throwing each other under the bus? Like I saw clips of of Nightshare talking about it. I saw clips of Trimby talking about it and him so saying it on Twitter, and then Noah talking about it. I think this is this is bullshit behavior, by the way. I can tell you, bro. I I have got fucking griefed by teammates, but the thing is, that teammate is a part of my team. That that p person is a part of my team. We lose together. We win together. The fact that this came out, I think is a very bad look. Very bad look. Really, really bad. Pioshik too. Like Pioshik talking about Upper Champion Pool. Like what kind of shit is that, man? What kind of shit is that, man? And then it's like you're doing it right after the game. You are emotional. You just lost. Summer tweet was fucking stupid. Well, what did they tweet? I, I missed. I missed it. Fuck! I don't, I'm not even logged in on Twitter on this computer. Summit replied dot dot dot. How is that defending Appa? So he replied dot dot dot. And why is that defending Appa? Or why is that defending? Does it, it, like it can mean everything. Let's be honest. Let's be honest. I think the fact that Pioshik is talking about it publicly. It's like, you know, he's talking about it in Korean. So in his mind, it's not going to reach his mid laner. That's why he's talking about it in Korean. He doesn't think that it's going to reach. It's like when you're communicating in a different language, you basically... You basically, like a part of your mind thinks that your your language and your words are existing in a different world. But once again, I'm not defending it. It's analysis, okay? Not justification. Because there's no justification for talking about it publicly. And if you want to talk about Team Liquid, honestly, both Summit... The thing is, let me let me drop some facts on you guys. Pioshik talking about it publicly, really fucking stupid. Pioshik had a good kindred game, but but he ran it down. He played so fucking bad. Summit and Pioshik are the big players on this team. You guys didn't do shit and you deserve to lose. Third fact is, APA, APA, actually does have a small effective champion pool. And that's fine. That's fine. APA had a fantastic half a split. He has half a split in two worlds. It's a fantastic, fantastic run. Fantastic run. So I'm not saying this to, to, to talk bad about APA, but his effective champion pool is definitely a problem. You don't play the strong mage, you don't play, play the meta, you have your Ziggs, you have your Nico, and then you have your Cassio and Aurelion Soul. Like these champions don't matter. But APA did his part to get them across the finish line. And these, these are all things that are true. Shouldn't talk about shit publicly. APA doesn't have a strong effective champion pool. But he did a fucking good job. And he deserves praise for it. Summit and Pioshik need were the, the two big players on this team, and they really dropped the ball against Gum. Really dropped the ball against Gum. And I don't envy the situation APA is in. He's going into a team that is full, it's Korean speaking, and he's completely in isolation.
Don't forget Code JJ. I am not forgetting Code JJ. I'm saying this specifically because the identity of Team Liquid was Pioshik and Summit. They were 100% Pioshik and Summit. That was the team. Pioshik and Summit. Core JJ is playing with Eon. There is nothing on Core JJ. I'm playing simple. They, they, these homies need some media training. Nevertheless, Aphelios. Guys, Aphelios is really bad. This is first pick Malka and then you play the game by ear. Right? I think that Fnatic as a whole had a really, really bad champion. And I think the biggest detriment was in the AD carry position. And I think this is something that has plagued them the whole year. Noah, after Aphelios was nerfed, with Gale Force changes and Aphelios nerfs, he wasn't the same player that we saw in the first nine games of regular splits. And I've been saying this for quite some time. Aphelios gets first pick. This is just Maokai first pick. Javan is already out. This is Maokai first pick, plain and simple. If enemy play picks Aphelios and Azir here, you need to be able to have answers, bro. You need to have some Zerath action. You need to have some Syndra action. You have to have some Talia action with Maokai and play it by ear, you know? If you go like... Bro, if you go Talia, Maokai, Ezreal, you know, everyone hates Ezreal, but... You know, it is what it is, you know? Like, you, you that's not too bad, you know? You can play it, but... you Okay, you go Aphelios and he goes Maokai, Azir, and then you slam Silas Sejuani. And enemy goes Kisanta on 3, like, I think that you're already losing, depending on what enemy goes 4-5. If they find a long-range AD to play, Ash, Caitlyn, you're in trouble. You're in big trouble. Here I thought that Weibo should ban the synergies with Sejuani, like Jax and Renekton. Uh, but those bans wouldn't matter anyway, because Olaf, uh, uh, like, uh, because they picked Olaf anyway. The game was still winnable despite the Kate? I don't think so. I don't think so. I think that's some cope. So we have uh, Olaf and Alistar and then Caitlyn Lukes. The thing is, people talked about what you pick here. I thought they're going to go Blitzcrank, right? Because I don't think Braum is good enough. I thought they're going to go Blitz because Blitz is the strongest into all of the range supports, right? But then the issue is, you are playing Blitzcrank against Kaysante. Like, playing this crack against Kesanta is really not comfortable. Really not comfortable. It's like, like, like playing Blitz against this team, playing Pike, it's not super comfortable, guys. But my issue is, at least... It will let you breathe. Because the thing is, if you have Silas mid, Silas mid is someone that needs attention. If you have Silas mid against Azir and... The thing is, you have Silas Sejuani. You have to fucking click Blitz. You need to fucking... You need to contest your lane. You need to. Alistar can't. It doesn't matter... If you are going to be piss useless later as Blitz, really doesn't matter because the game is not about you. The game is not about bot. The game is about mid and top. Can Thresh contest? No. Thresh is shit. Thresh is really bad. It doesn't matter how useless Pike and Blitz are gonna, gonna be later. Because this game is about early game. In the draft you're in, it's already about early game. You have Silas Sejuani. It's all about early game already. Why Olaf if it's about top? Olaf is fine. I'm not a big fan of Olaf. But it's fine. Here it's perfectly fine. You have Sejuani Olaf, you're playing Olaf into Kesante, playable matchup, fine into Maokai, fine into Azir. It's like, it's okay. I don't, I don't have an issue with, with Olaf. I feel like you pick hyper carry top since Aphelios won't carry. 
But the thing is, it's like, can you can you say it's champion names instead of like, like what what do you mean when you say hyper carry top? What does that mean? Can you give champion names instead of like vague vague blanket? Fane, Fane, Fiora. Fiora is Olaf with a sword. Jax, Olaf, Fiora, they all serve the same thing. Quinn sucks. Cannon with... So, so you want a hyper carry top. So first and, all, first and foremost... First and foremost... Cannon, you call Cannon a hyper carry. That's already one thing. And then second, you already have Sejuani Silas showing. And you want to pick Cannon with that. Gwen, once again, you have full AP topside. You can FF that game. Gwen is going to need three items to win the game and it's way too late. Olaf, Jax, Fiora, they are all in the same school of champions. The key thing is that he chose Olaf because Malka is showing. That's all. Kled, Trindamir. The thing is, guys, we need a champion that can lane into Kaysante. There's a lot of things that we need to hit here, okay? How is Bard here? Why would you pick Bard? To give enemy team Bardult. Bard sucks ass here. You need to pick something that is as strong as possible in lane. And that's Lux or Karma. Olaf is not a problem here, guys. The problem is you are sitting on Aphelios and enemy is capable of paying Caitlyn. And then they have counterpick support. If you look at the analysis of the game, picking Blitzcrank Pike is better. Because you, this game is all about creating volatility. And that's it. Here, if you're based, you play Aphelios top. You play Aphelios top into Kaysanta and you pick Ash. I'm kidding. I'm kidding, guys. Right, let's continue. Let's look at the game. Alright, game three. What would they counter pick into Blitz? They would pick like Brom. Organa is trash. Yeah, obviously this bot lane matchup sucks ass. Limbeat is just eating shit. Noah, I mean Noah is eating shit, sorry. They are just slow pushing. It's like they're trying to slow push as hard as possible. Noah lost all of his HP for one minion. It's like, the issue is as well, you're playing Aphelios Alistar. Aphelios is one of the weakest champions in the game level 1. If it isn't a situation where he outranges and can poke, right? Where he can poke. Right? And play out of the bush and stack his uh, little tempo or conqueror, you know? But he leverages range. But if he can't leverage his range, he's completely useless. Level 1. He has no spell. What's good into Kate Lux? Ezreal Karma is an option, yeah. Ash lanes is an option. Varus lanes are an option. Uh, wonky fucking AP bot lane lanes can, can be an option. Senna Tam could be an option. Ziggs could be an option, yeah. Nah, you can't lane swap, guys. You're gonna put Olaf into a lane swap. Sivir sounds very bad. Once again, I repeat, I repeat, you could make the support pick better because I think Alistair is completely useless here. But the issue is still, they are blind picking, they're picking Aphelios first and enemy was capable of playing Caitlyn Lux. And that was like good on them. Weibo didn't show Caitlyn this tournament. I didn't think that uh, the, the Caitlyn would show up here. I didn't think so. But T1 Becker tweeted, Becker who used to be the GM of, of Sandbox when I was there. Able to fetch translation. Alright, Yamato Cannon is fucking beautiful. Alright, thank you, Becker. Yo. 
Very nice. Yeah, for sure. Uh, thank you very much, uh, AD6. For sure, the Jinx ban is really troll. That's 100% true. Aphelios is good in the Jinx. I think that's really troll. I think they were just banning ADs that they saw in the tournament. I honestly think that they just got insanely KO'd. This is fucking leg kick to the face. Just leg kick in the forehead. Really. This is some Leon Edwards shit right here, man. I'm telling you. Alright, let's watch uh, this bot lane get bullied now. The whole game. Oscar gets a good base in. The Shy couldn't push in the wave on time. He's doing okay, but bot lane is like bleeding out of every crevice, man. It's uh, a disaster. I wanted to see here, because when I watched it live, I was so surprised by Sejuani CS. So, Maokai is clearing so slow, like, what is Maokai doing this game? Maokai? Oh, Maokai gets pushed off rafters. Okay. He does red, and then golems, and then crosses. And then he finishes wolves. And takes Gromp. Then cancel, takes blue, and then 340. Then he goes into bot and doesn't base. And just because he doesn't base, Sejuani takes the, the top top Raptor, okay. Well here, here Weiwei gets kind of fucked. Weiwei gets kind of fucked because he did the slower clear. He did the slower clear, which meant Sejuani was first in river, level 4. And then bottling condition didn't matter because Sejuani was quicker. And then he uh, did blue late. Because Sejuani spots him, allowed Sejuani to cross into top side, take crab and also his raptor spawn. And botlane is over. Now Marka did golems and now he's going straight into bot to cover them because all he needs to do is just be there. And Sejuani tries to do something to break it, but Marka just skipped all camps and went straight into bot. I like this from, from Weiwei. It's a very crucial moment here because it's better for Weiwei to be bot than to farm camps that are not going to make him stronger in the short term. It's just bot, chilling, chilling, chilling. And then there's finally a ward uh, in Caitlyn's inventory, so she just replaces it, and then Malkai goes to click camps. Guys, Leona wouldn't make a difference. How would Leona make a difference? You know, against Leona, you know what, what, what people do? They go cleanse on Lux and they go cleanse on Kate. And then Leona hates her life, I can assure you. Presses E, Caitlyn can trap on the E, right? Which is good. And she has to wait till R. It's a very similar process to Alasar. But the tech is, the most important tech is that Lux needs to go cleanse. Then that lane is unplayable. That is the crucial thing. Wait, wait, pathing here this game was into bot, base into bot, after doing golems, being bot side, taking his bot side, still taking bot side. So he secures the Drake, which is super nice. And then here, Humanoid. We didn't see we don't see it on camera, but he's just ulting the wave. I'm not sure uh why he felt the need to do so. Um but already like that shit is uh that shit is just bad. 
just missed Karma's Zerath opportunity, Senna. You wanted them to play Senna, Aphelios? Like a lot of people are giving suggestions as if Aphelios is not locked in. The whole draft would have been different if Aphelios wasn't locked in. Then maybe Red Side would take Aphelios away because they know Noah's not going to play Caleb. The whole different dynamic. So Aphelios is already locked in. Let's stop suggesting champions in a situation where Aphelios is not locked in because it doesn't matter. No, it for sure not, was not running out. Like, he just took the ult. Like, he just, take, he just reached level 6. He just took the ult. I don't think he's running out. Like, look. Look at the duration. We see the duration. Let show you. See? Long duration. Then here it's like Razor finds a really good gank angle, honestly. Really good gank angle. Uh, but it just is, isn't enough. It just isn't enough. And then now, like, the game is fucking over, man. I'm not even kidding. Like, Sejuani did a fantastic job pathing wise, honestly. Like, Razor did such a good job of punishing and reading what Malka was doing. He was really fucking far ahead. And. And this, this is just. This is just beautiful. But it's like, Silas against Azir should never take Azir ult. You take Azir ult in your E and then you can buffer your R, you know? You never take Azir R preemptively. You just don't. You don't need to. You really don't need to. Shen top, bro. Like, what year is it, bro? I'm telling you, Shen, Shen ult top doesn't solve bot lane problems. I was like, these guys have, uh, have played things for days. Mauka is just chilling around bottom side, clearing the bot side camps. They spot Silas on, on the movement here. Uh, but Crisp loses flash. Noah eats shit on the exit. From Boner. Same thing. No, Pantheon support is very bad against this team. Uh, against this lane. Pantheon sucks ass against ADs that are longer range than them. Yeah, the game is over. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, the game is over. Crisp is a really good range support player. I'm gonna tell you that much. Crisp is literally what what people think Trimby is. That's Crisp. Insane trash, insane range support player. That's that's Crisp. Really good range support champion. We have, we have grabs in the chat. You can tell us how good Crisp is. Fnatic picked the fellows over Rumble. They banned Rumble. Do you think it was a draft cap? Yeah, this game was a big draft cap. Really big. Wait, I was speaking of food, what did you say? I said, Grabs can tell us how good Crisp is. No, I didn't say Grabs draft, bro. I'm not, I'm not one of your former players that is just dunking on you for no fucking reason at all. Uh, <laughs> I go back cry in bed. <laughs> Enjoy your food, brother. <laughs> yeah, it's like, bro, Trimby was so fucking sick and tired of this, bro. 
But light plate is super good. Yeah, you know what? You know what grabs at least at least the skins. The FPX skins, at least they're ugly as fuck and nobody uses them. You don't get reminded in game. Fanatic on the other side, they see these IG skins everywhere, bro. <laughs> Rip Bozo is. I think this is so cruel, by the way, when I do this to play this. And then Razork as well here. He doesn't get the lethal. But then, bro, like Chris, bro, they need to. I don't know if it's like this. I, bro, I, this visually is a mindfuck, bro. Like, wh why does Silas inherit the skin of the Maokaiult? Look at what's happening on our screen, guys. I don't blame Chris for dying to this shit. What the fuck is Chris supposed to think here? Look at this fucking root storm that's happening. What's happening here? Bro, I, I don't know. <laughs> and then Weiwei survives too. It's huge. Ah, pain, pain. Just straight up pain, guys. A way but bottle and play this fucking good, bro. I don't know, just give Silas Ult some kind of different color scheme, I think. Not a bad trade here for uh, Mr. Noah. He just wants to base for his Ravenous Hydra. He's gonna get it. Here, I honestly thought he would live. I honestly thought he would live because I, I pressed tab and he looks like the tankiest motherfucker on the block. But uh, he lived. He lived. He lived. I mean, he died. Sorry. And then they just throw it all away. They get a nice kill and they're about to crash the Rift Herald, you know, this fucking dirty Herald that they placed. They're about to get a nice little crash. But then they just want more. Like Billy Talent, you know? Ugh. Ay. Ugh. Ay, ay, ay. Ugh. Ugh. Oh, just fucking. Book the third lane ticket, guys. Oh shit, bro. They got fucking aced. They got aced, guys. They got aced. They got fucking aced. <laughs> oh, that stings, guys. That stings. Oh, yeah, that's that series, guys. That's that series. And let's talk more about Fnatic later. I'm going to do a breakdown of all the EU teams uh, after, guys. After. Finally, someone let me out of my cage. Alright, G2. G2 versus Billy Billy. So my issue in this first game, bro. Well, it's so sad because this series, this series straight up started the game 2. I think their draft is terrible. It's like their champions are good. It's exactly the direction that I wanted it, right? It's exactly the direction I wanted it. But I don't know if we can pull up my stream. away with it because yeah. so pressure
happy. So you're gonna be strong. Want to have the this is what we want. This is what I was at. The Nico ban is a good replacement. But this, this is what I, I was sitting and doing this shit before the game, you know? I was like, yo, let's go in this direction. The Nico ban is better than Azir. I, I, I like that. Who is which side in this game? This is G2 on blue. Because they had side selection. I was like, yo, let's do this. Let's invite the Kaiser and then let's counter it. I, I was so excited for this. But the issue is, bro, I, you can't go go and give fucking El Kazaya and fucking Bin Jax. I don't know, like testing that out, man. Like, let's look at the Jax games, okay? There was two teams that had the balls. Two teams. So this game, Jax almost fucking won me nine this. He solo killed Zeus twice. He had insane conditions before On completely sold them out. Jax would have carried this game. He would have. If he was allowed to get to 3 core without On running it down, he would have carried. He solo killed Zeus twice and he was fucking 60 CS disease and On was just running it down. And then there was Fnatic. Fnatic tried too. And they have a very good draft against Jax. But there's something about poppy players at this tournament that are not named Weiwei and they just don't know that if I hold all my spells, I can deny Jax. Because Bin, he sees that W being used and he just does this. And then he comes in. So... So, can I t t close this? All right. No, oh, Poppy was doing good that game. But it's more about how he fought later to deny Jax. I think that you contradicted yourself, Rivas. Like, if champions are good into Jax, then it's true the whole game. Oh, Zika is a good Jax, but it's not Bin Jax. So, they're banning Draven for the sake of Maokai and Oriana, which is fine. I think Nico ban was good. I didn't spot this. I had Nico as the one too, and I thought that this is something that will play out, you know? Nevertheless, I think Zaya ban is way better here, and I think that you just remove Jax. Jax and Zaya need to be banned, right? They just need to be banned. I, I, I said this the entire time, it was the same here in the Genji series. It's like, when enemy, if you know the enemy is going to play with locked bands, then you better fucking ban Zaya yourself. It was the same exact thing. Just ban Zaya yourself. And there was just no lesson here. Just ban Zaya yourself, for the love of God. Just ban Zaya yourself. If you don't want to pick it, ban it. And then invite Kaisa, pick Kogma Braum. But we didn't see this shit. We didn't see this shit. Enemy goes to Giovanni, Zaya. And it's like, the thing is... Kogma Braum is really OP into Kaiser because Kaiser sucks ass with range support. So the enemy has to play melee support together with Kaiser. But here instead, what we get, I said already, like, listen to it. Here on four and then melee on five. Milio is dangerous here. Oh, I'm saying Milio is dangerous here. Bro, I thought they're gonna go Azir on 4 and then pick Milio and I thought it would be GG. Because the synergy with Azir and Milio is really OP. Billy Billy ban Azir. Good fast. And then I'm like, yo. Top players don't play Rumble. Both top players don't play Rumble. Also this Rumble spot is worse. Don't play Milio actually. Alistar, okay. And then I'm like, I'm coping. I'm like, on maybe doesn't play Milio. I guess. Simple scale has the comes, man. Of the oh. dead. They are going to Pain. Oh. Leo. They're going to answer the power of Pain. Let me into the comes. Their own AD carry as well. Let me into the comes, man. Of the ulti to just say, you know what? Forget Maokai reset button. Exactly. You have that. Anyway, the reason the video is so fucking good is because Sinister is well with Zaya and 
It's really good into Mauke with the R as well, and then the lane is tough for Kogma Brom. That's all. Jace gets locked in, Poppy gets locked in into Jax, which is fine, right? But, yeah. Tyler gets picked into Jace. You know, this is just like dealer's choice. You can pick whatever the fuck you want here. And Tyler has long range and can support the Jax and the Sejuani. But the main issue here is that even though blue side draft is perfectly fine, I think that the issue is that Jax and fucking Zaya is in the hands of players that really shouldn't be allowed to play them. I think that T1 is a very unique team, and they are they're a tier one team. G2 is a tier two team. I hate to to like I wanted to talk about this later in regards to G2, but G2 didn't play too much tier one League of Legends. I think that they had two elite players in Mickey and Caps at this tournament, but everyone else were not on par with the best of the best. And the thing is, everybody is focusing on the G2 NRG series. Everyone's focusing on the G2 NRG series, but the truth is, the games that they won against, against, for example, Weibo, this was a fucking steal. This was a steal. They should have lost this game. The same thing here against Damwon. They could have lost this game too if, with that stupid Nash that they did. G2 just didn't have a good tournament. And I think that everything is a little bit too results driven. Why didn't other teams steal versus Eastern teams? Because, bro, it's not a, there's not a, it's not a skill that you use, you know? But I, I think G2 just had a terrible tournament. Plain and simple. Against Damwon, I think that they had a winning position and threw the game themselves at Nash. But then Alistar ran it down. And then I think against Weibo. I said, after that Weibo game, I was like, if this is the best of three, I'm going with Weibo win against G2. It's like, keep in mind, look at look at even here against Weibo, right? If you look at if you look at the draft, G2 had Oriana, Zaya, Rakam. That is like Exodia on the batch. Right? Right. Yeah, and it's like it's also like Eastern teams, like Chinese teams. They don't, uh, they don't play good uh, in the ones. Uh, nevertheless, uh, let's take a look at this game. Uh, my issue still, I just looked at this and Bin is playing Jax. Bin is playing Jax. That's my issue. And the thing is, uh, BB on Poppy. He doesn't know how to hold his spells and he wastes them. Uh, I remember thinking this. Let's see if it's true, because it was some days ago. Why are some people trying to say a 10k gold lead is not a throw? That was a giga throw. They, they had 12k gold advantage with Mountain Soul. Mountain Soul also means that you have four drakes of stats. That was a giga throw. Giga throw. They're starting to expand the zone when they're firing... 9k, 12k, whatever the fuck it is, man. Well, what does it matter? It's like the effective gold advantage there is like 15k plus, right? All right, let's take a look at this game. So the bot lane was going rough, really rough. Like Zaya was poking back and forth with uh, with uh, the spells of uh, Milio. He's bleeding out of his bleeding heart. Like this is not the same. Kogma Brom into Kaiser is good, but Kogma Brom into Zaya X, I don't like it. I don't like it. You can pair Zaya with range supports very, very fine, and she can play a poke lane with like she could even like I, I would maybe she could go Q Max and like buy AD. I think it would have been better than Berserk Reefs, you know? Like maybe three points Q, something like this, and just play for the poke. Here, just really good gang timer. It's like BB is trying to crash the wave. Mauke is uh, bouncing out the wave, you know. That's so bad and wrong. 
You don't just steal games because you are bad. What do you, what do you mean? What? Yeah, obviously you need to play good enough to punish a mistake. But the idea is that you don't value a team highly for winning a game that was completely lost in the first place. That's the point. If you win because the enemy is running it down, what does it say about you? The next time you will lose. And we continue. A poppy can trade very well against Jax. It's not only about the W. Pindor, you are so confused, man. Uh, I already explained it. Like, you are interpreting it in such a weird way, man. I, I don't know what's what's uh, what's in your brain, bro. Uh, I'm not gonna lie. Like, I, if you can't... Like, plain and simple, I'll explain it once. If the enemy throws a lead that is so fucking decisive, that is on them, okay? Sure, you need to be a team, and you need to be have the awareness to be able to punish that mistake which Mickey and, of course, uh, Caps did in that game. But the opportunity is given to them by the enemy. Alright, so BB uses Flash, he dies. The wave is frozen. Uh, Jax is gonna thin it out. Base TP back. Have have uh, he went ninja tabby, which is surprising. Not sure if that's common. Not sure. But I remind you, it's like Poppy has has decent lane into into um, into fucking Jax. Not because of W only. Like he can trade and, and fight back. You know. What just happened? Caps burning flash here as well. Really fucking well played. Playing with the face rush. I got no E from before and he knew it. Like Caps was a fucking demon in this series, bro. Caps played so fucking good, man. So good. Here, it's like gank me once. Shame on you. Jungle gap. Not really at the highest level, right? Because it's like the map opener from Sejuani. It's like they see him crossing into bot side, so they should be aware of this, right? Liike and Caps got pushed out because of support gap, right? So in this moment, you need to be able to crash bot and then play defensively and retake, right? Bilbilly is now crossing into bottom side. This should be painfully obvious for red side. If Brom opens on bot to make the wave crash, then they need to be able to make the wave crash and then reconnect. But here they are slow pushing. I'm not sure what they are doing. They are like looking to poke the Zaya. Like they need to hard push. I don't know why they are not hard pushing. I really don't know. I can't see. It's a mini map. I, I'm judging it, you know. This is the only game Caps played well. Hello Gen 6. You want to take a permaband? You want to take a permaband? The game against Dam 1. He really played good. Against fucking Weibo. He played really insane. This series, he was by far the best player on G2. By far. His Nico game, his Jace game, he fucking really tried his fucking hardest to carry the game. So, okay, dying to this is really bad. G2 mismanaged the wave. They didn't fucking push when Milo showed on mid. Really bad. Okay, fucking take the L. Base, you fucked yourself, okay? But now, Sejuani goes for fucking round 2, Electric Boogaloo. Yak has no HP, G2 has no HP, and, of course, the wave is frozen, so Shun stays. And now they spotted him, right? And they backed off, and then they go again and they die to it. What on earth is this, man? What is this? Very bad. Pogma dies. Bin is eating platings for breakfast. He's taking one. 
backs off, pulls away, and goes home. Not sure here. I don't know. I don't know how BB is managing the wave. But I don't understand how he can't crash the wave top. Jack's based on a wave and he can't crash the wave? Like, well, how is this the wave state after Jack's based? I'm not sure. Watch this. Olaf versus Renekton. Why is he putting it in the wrong order? But look how look how cold Bin is, right? No reaction. And then when he actually throws it, he ease. That Bin actually doesn't have, you know. Um, Honestly, I don't care what he says. I just want to. I just want to watch. I don't know, BB's XP awareness here is really bad. Like you need to be able to react to this, no? Like this is just BB running it down. Like, like Bin is just like, like Bin is Bin is going for this because he knows that the Q punish it. The punish isn't that harsh because of the Q. I just want to see still like on the gank timer, right? Like Bin's wave management is really, really good because it's so well in unison. In unison with jungle. But I, what the fuck is he doing, bro? Uh, bro, what the fuck is this video, man? Let me see, man. The one thing I'm thinking here is that he should just fucking queue the whole wave here. I think he, yeah, I think he can actually crash this wave. I think if he just queues the wave here, pushes, queues the wave twice, crashes it, I think all is good. Because this is Malkai's base time. But just because he slow pushed this wave, he needs to hard crash the next one, and the next one will be too deep on the enemy side. I think that he can actually push this wave. Why don't you call your jungler here, coach? Because you don't want to waste jungle time. Like, he doesn't need jungle. I think that he can just crash the cannon and he's trolling. I want to understand here why BB couldn't fucking crash the wave. Actually, the base is so fucking cold from Bin, bro. Bin is so cold, actually. Ah, uh, Ben plays this insanely well. Holy moly, Ben is too good.
Here, here BB doesn't push on time. Here he doesn't push on time. The seven minute wave is a cannon wave. And he pulls the previous wave, so the next wave is further away, so he can't push and he can't crash on time. Here he just fucking fucked him. Holy shit, Bin just fucking completely won the game here. <laughs> wow. Well, the counter matchup point is mute now because it's like it's not that big of a counter and also bin has a better base he has a kill he has xp advantage he's stacking away right there's nothing to do with counter matchup the nuance of this lies in the fact that he crashes this wave and then the next wave is cannon and then and then plain and simple here right like he he goes for the plating and then pulls the next wave so the next wave is deeper so it takes longer for BB to actually push it. This is very nice. Because now I don't think BB pushes this on time. And then a the question here if BB... Like if BB... The fact that BB uses spells on, on, on Jax, I think is a mistake. The only thing I could see an adjustment in this is if he actually starts to fucking queue the wave. If he starts to queue the wave and queues the wave twice, then maybe he can clear this before the cannon wave comes and it stays even. That could be the move. I think the fact that he uses spells on Jax here is a mistake. I think Halu N6, once again, you are talking about a very, like, piss point. Uh, honestly, a lot of the things that you say Halu N6, I don't like them. I think it's like really like random you know okay i just wanted to know that part because now top is fucked like poppy has no base and the wave is frozen top jack is level five look at the look at the gold advantage in the inventory by the way Big goal advantage in the inventory. At least, you know, the, the top situation is very good for Bin, but at least the top situation creates a situation where it's harder for Bin to fight Herald. So at least, at least they amplify that, you know? At least they amplify that. Yag behind in CS level order even if he didn't gank a single time? He did. He did. He did. He ganked mid, and then there was three on mid, and then he crossed into bot, and he didn't do camps. Gwen out of the picture in this tournament? Uh, the issue with Gwen is that we are, we are seeing too many like tank junglers are being played with AP mids. That makes Gwen worse. But I think Gwen is still perfectly playable. Every game there's a Maokai, Rel, or whatever the fuck. Jack played this fucking good. Jack played this situation really, really well here. He dodge all of the abilities, but uh, the bot cap is a bit too big, guys. The bot cap is a bit too massive. Mickey Flash is really troll. But uh, Elk and Ona are just first to every situation. And Kogma got a lot of breathing room off of this, you know. Like, the fact that the Elk and On needed to move here, right, is a really big deal, and Mickey had a very good read on the situation. As mentioned before here, right, uh, BB was in a really hard lane spot uh, because of the freeze that Vin did. Here, Caps is so committed to the cause, because most mid laners here Right? Most mid laners here are going to push the mid wave because Yagao showed on the bot world. But he's really committed to the act here. He didn't show on the mid wave because he pushed the previous one and then crossed into here. The issue here is that what 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 could Caps possibly do? Right now Caps is providing pressure onto bot and providing pressure into top. 
Wasn't Yon better for Bibi here? First time chatter tells him to pick Yon into Jax. His Yon is better than his Poppy. Let's be nice. Let's be nice, guys. He really, really, that's a horrible matchup for Yon. Very losing matchup. Poppy is a fine pick. So yeah, Caps committed to the bit. Really, really good, you know. It's like, I like dunking on people, but I think it's, I, I don't want to dunk on someone that generally doesn't know, you know. Look how busy Caps tried to be this game, bro. Like, he alleviated so much fucking pressure on both you guys, I can't even fucking begin to talk about it. Like, he pulled Milio onto mid, perma. Pulled on even onto mid. Roamed bot, TP'd onto bot. Burnt Yagao's flash. Twice. Like, Caps is an absolute machine this game. He saved, bro, all of a sudden, all of this, these feathers Kogma had, had to pluck out of his ass when he based. Insane, insane engine, bro. Larson is better, yeah, Larson is better, yeah. Larson is really better. You know, this blows. This blows. Caps trying to squeeze. They got him. You know, they got him. This blows. He is fucked here. He tries to play on face rush. You know, obviously he should just fucking look to... Look to fucking eat the Seju and queue out and play the game. I look to flash, you know. This, this is the humanoid death. Exactly. This is not good. Did they see Seju? Oh. That's even that makes it worse. Ish. True, true, true. Not good guys. Humanoid death, indeed. Let's continue. Alright, let's see more EU heralds. Here comes BB also, TPing bot to relieve some pressure. BB is like, this is the only window I'm gonna have to TP. I crashed the wave on top and now Jax is coming with Divine Sunderer, bro. This TP is fucking game losing. It's, it's just game losing, I'm not gonna lie. Surprise, I'm back. Imagine if I had a real weapon. Who wants a piece of the champ? Ah, oh. Millie as well. And then it's like, yeah. It's game losing. It is game losing. Like this TP here from BB is just game losing. Who wants a piece of the champ? This is... Like they put the Herald on mid and then Millie ult makes Bin survive and he gets cleansed out and they get pushed out, there's no counter play here and Jax is 3-0. Look at that gold advantage. They didn't see this Jax TP, plain and simple, they didn't see the Jax TP. Is there anything that can fuck Jackson Lane? Many things can fuck Jackson Lane. 
every time I see this champ played, he pees on everyone. The reason, <laughs> the reason is Jax is used as a counter. Jax is used as a counter. It's like, uh, you can pick a lot of champs into Jax. That's really not the issue. The thing is, the champs that are blindable, Jax is good into, right? So people are blinding. People are blinding the likes of Renekton, Kesante, Aatrox. Jax is good into all of them. You can play Kennen into Jax, yeah, but then if you make a mistake in that lane, he buys Mercs and fucks you. That's why people are willing to pick Jax into Rumble, because the same is true. You can blind Rumble, yeah. Sorry, uh, Rumble is the most OP champion on the patch. That's that. After these three kills, Jax runs the whole game. He runs the region, runs the game. Not sure why BB here, like BB, like ults out. You know, BB can look for lethal here. Bro, stack the fucking demolish and eat the Talia into the turret, into Q, into fucking R, and then monk the turret with your auto and then play the game, you know? Like, there's, there's, some, there's some action to be had here. Look what's happening here. Favorite MF Doom album. Uh, for me, the favorite, my favorite is just his Christmas, his Christmas album. The thing is, this Kogma got to the point where he could actually carry the game. Because usually the main, like On is just straight up running it down here. That's why, that's why like, On playing champions like this, you know, this is not On, you know, this is... <laughs> my man On has had a tournament, bro. My man On has had a terrible tournament. <laughs> What's your favorite gym exercise? Honestly, rows. Rows. I love rows. Will you comment on Chasey wanting to bring Vladimir to Worlds? What the fuck should I comment to that, man? What does that even mean? Here, you know, G2 consolidated. They really, really, like, consolidated. Black Lever Timer, like, they have two items. It's like, this game is competitive. The main thing, though, the main thing is that BB needs to hold his spells and he needs to deny Jax. So many players have such a fucking hard time just not using their abilities and letting their abilities breathe. I think that G2 could have done more here. Maybe if Rumble, like if Brom buffered the ultimate to Maokai Ult was used, would have been better. The thing is, is like, I understand why Yike is conservative with the Maokai Ult, because he knows that Milio is holding R, so he doesn't want to have an equal trade, you know? Ben had TP. That's two. They have five on the spot, and Poppy has spells. Caps doesn't want to let this guy go. You know, I like that Ben has the awareness here that he needs to fucking flash. I respect it so much, man. I like it. I like his flash here a lot. Caps got so much value here, bro. He got the, the Elk ultimate and really, really good value here from, from Caps. Flash from, from Ben too. Jace has TP, so they can easily deny this. 
I'm just forcing it out. Fat EQ. Caps really did his best. This, of course, was not good. A really, really key advice for all the Jace players out there. Never show on the wave. Just fucking EQ out of folk perma. You don't need to be on the wave ever, man. It's way better when the enemy doesn't know where you are, man. This is a mistake from Caps. Like being here in melee, bro, is, is not good. But I think also, I think these, I think BB is trolling here too. BB needs to be the one next to Hansama. Because Caps is trying to create space so Hansama can hit the wave. Yike is throwing saplings. These guys should be changing spots. Brom put the ward, Brom should be here too, you know? I don't know what Blood is doing here. I don't know what Brom is doing here too. Yeah, Caps could die here for sure. Like the position here is just wrong from G2. No, like Jace shouldn't show on the wave, he should just be. You should just not be on the wave. Here I understand why Jace, uh, he seems safe, you know? It's like, it's a very specific timing he dies on. This is very close. Mistake to die, of course. Talia can hover and all that jazz. But uh, it's like, you feel safe because you have a ward on... on, on uh, Tribush and the wave is towards your side. And then Bin going through river to get with Talia ult is, is, is huge. That was very hard. There's no Jace TP as well. And uh, he's done a good job. Marco ult comes out. But Milio of course has R. Cleanses everybody. Mickey I think over postures here. Here I don't know why BB presses W again. I don't like the W usage here from Broken Blade to just get move speed. It's like, what's the purpose of it, you know? Like, like there's no need to look for this because Hansama is hitting actively. But this fucking stopwatch is crazy to me. Look at the stopwatch. Does he just not get into the wall? What, 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 what the fuck happened here? He doesn't get him into the wall, no? Look. He doesn't get him in the wall. Oh, yeah. Gag went for the flash smite right, it makes perfect sense to look for it. Then he needs to just kite right. It makes perfect sense for him to play it like this. It's only as before. I don't think that should be possible. They wouldn't be on time to get the second drake. For sure not. Look at Jack's items. That's a fucking flame horizon, ladies and gentlemen. And now Jack's uh, Jason's poke is just too pointless. Doesn't do anything. Um, there's no pressure on the enemy to get engaged on as well because the tools are just not strong enough. Mickey looking for Q flash is also natural. It's just a very terrible game spot. We're gonna get teared apart. Pokemon still has the damage to like pressure but blue side composition is so weak on site and i cannot get engaged on so it's like i hate the usage of 131 because i think people don't understand them most of the time and it's it's very rare that you can play 131 because it relies on perfect information on very strong champs the thing is this is a this is an ideal game for zaya and milio to be alone on the mid wave and uh, Jax Jax cannot be ganked by anyone he literally can 1v3. Zaya and Milio have no pressure on them, you know? It's like, they have no pressure at all. And um, additionally, you have um, Talia ult. 
that there's no Sejuani can play like a very liberal role, you know, be everywhere. It's tough. The game is just over. Doesn't matter that Kogma can do really well in 5v5. There's just no pressure. Like even if Zaya gets EQ'd by Jace, it's not enough to pressure off the wave. You know? And the Maokai ult is just melee ulted. Look at Giga Ben here. Once again, the same, right? It's like, not that it would, that it would matter here, but BB wasting his spells. It's like, BB is wasting his spells. Why is he wasting his spells, you know? Because BB just needs to hold his spells. They're getting so invited into a situation where L can hit, can, can hit for free. All they need to do is play on that position. I think this kill on Caps on side was just brilliant. Uh, they forced Jace TP and they punished Jace TP. I think that sequence was really, really fucking good from Billy Billy. They didn't notice the TP at all, man. Take a look at game two, guys. G2 go blue side, they ban Jax, Zaya, Alistar, first pick Nico. They play, right? It's like this is the situation I wanted them to set up. situation I wanted them to set up. I think that Billy Billy's 1-2 is very weak against Nico. Nico W counters these champs. Nico's really strong in lane, has engage. And Nico W counters Marcus Sapling, Maokai Ult, and also JCQ. I think that this is not a good rotation. I think that they should play Oriana into Nico. And um, and then you can go like Oriana Javan because enemy is not gonna play Nico Maokai. I think that here Billy Billy into draft. Plain and simple. Right? But at least G2 banned Jackson Zaya. They could have asked me and I could have told them that these are the bands to do, but I think they could have asked a random Redditor too and they would have told you this. I'm not patting my own back, I'm just kind of blaming G2 for this one. They go Nocturne, uh, which is fine into Jace, decent into Maokai. I think that if, if you have good enough players to leverage Nocturne Fog, I think that Nocturne Ult can be really good. I think considering how Jeet has been playing, support, support and mid lane were the best performing players and they're gonna leverage fucking Nico ult, you know? Alright, so Renekton gets picked, Jax is out and... The enemy team doesn't play Rumble, so fuck them, right? But I think here Oriana Jarvan would have been so winning, but they just didn't play it, you know? I don't know why I didn't go Oriana Jarvan. You go Renekton, 4 5, Nautilus Rel, Tristana, Renata Glass gets banned. Tristana just elk picked it into Kaiser, and that's why they ban it. Rakan gets picked, Olaf into Renekton, perfectly fine. Um, you know, I think it's fine into Mok Maokai too, but. One of those champs, you know, it's like, I hate when players that are worse than their opposition play Olaf. You're just gonna still lose the game. Uh, Lissandra gets locked in, fine pairing with Kaiza, and uh, fits with the composition too, right? And then Rakan Zeri. Okay. Uh, let's take a look at this guy, at this guy's video first. We're not gonna like listen into him, but we're just gonna abuse the fact that uh, this is the situation. So he pulls the wave. Usually, this matchup of the way it goes is that um, you're playing Flash Ghost, and Olaf is stronger than Renekton on the wave. He should be able to crash three waves into Proxy, the fourth, into base. This is usually like the pattern that you see Olaf into Renekton. He just wants to crash this cannon. And then if he has information on jungle clear, like he does in this case, right? Been uh, like the enemy jungle, Maokai is pathing into bot and we have a contestion here. To be honest, nobody will stack MR, so G2 could have done some cannon to add to Nocturne combo no. The thing is, the stacking MR is not really the problem. Merc's value is the problem. Merc's is... The bane 
of of everything. It's like I hope, I hope, really. You want to make mages better? You want to make mages better? Remove the magic resistance from shoes, from from mercs. Because the issue is, most champs that have CC in their kit, they get counted by mercs too. Even Ninja Tabi, right? Ninja Tabi is a shoe that has armor, but the effect is specific against basic attacks. The thing is, when we say stack MR, is that people have just Mercury Thread Phobia. And rightfully so, because Mercs, they will, they will come into your room when you're sleeping and fucking suffocate you, bro. Because it's like, keep in mind, right? Look at the top lane champs. When you buy... When you buy Ninja Tabi... Let's think about the top laners. So you have Renekton, you have Kesante, you have Aatrox. All of these champions have a very, very ability centric, right? My my point here is that Mercs double dips against both champions, right? And the truth of Mercs, the truth of Mercs is. Even a champion without CC, like Akali, hates her life when she sees Mercs. Remove shoes from game, make all champs snakes. <laughs> no, it's, it's plain and simple. It's just that you double dip in value, and that value is just too intense. And the issue is, with most AP champions, is that they can't itemize for lane. The AP champions can't itemize for lane so well. If you're playing cannon and enemy has mercs, you, you're, you're just kind of in trouble. You have no item that can give you the same amount of value that mercs has. There's no item. There was like a small window. You remember when Zeke's arm guard and the fucking item from Banshees was OP? There was a small window where they had like insane lane items. Mercs, Mercury threads are OP. They need to be nerfed. Really, they need to be nerfed. They need to be nerfed. Would you nerf Tenacity, MR or both? I would nerf MR. Just remove the MR and turn it into a different item altogether. You know what you do? Swiftness, just combine Swiftness and Mercs, remove the MR. There you go. And make some MR shoe. And there you go. Make an MR shoe. Should they also remove armor boots? No. I don't think so. The difference is for armor, armor interacts very differently in the game because there's so much penetration in kits. And also there's Black Cleaver. There's also, like for example, Darius has, has pen in his kit. You have, you have Garen. Like they, they've compensated for all of these damage, damage dealers that make, that do physical damage, that don't want to buy LDR and Cyrilda. They have pen in their kit. Jarvan, Renekton, right? And then there's Black Cleaver on top of that, right? An armor is something that needs to be treated like that because there's armor per level in the game. So Ninja Tabi doesn't sway the game as much. Mercs are OP. That's the issue. That's the issue. Hey Bin, he, he bases in TP's back, and this is really good condition for BB. Right? This is good. I don't think that he played anything wrong so far. Resistance are fake? No, I think armor is kind of fake. Not really. 
Couldn't you make social shoes better? No. They will be too OP. They will be too... Sorcerer shoes are already really OP. But the issue is that the cases where sorcerer shoes are good, they are too good. And the cases where they are bad, they are terrible. But that's fine. I think sorcerer shoes borderline need to get nerfed. If you nerf MR... If you nerf mercs, you have to nerf sorcerer shoes. Because 18 pen... Here, that axis is kind of bad, but at least, at least, it comes from Bin, right? It's like Bin is walking that as if he's going to cue the wave, and then BB cues for the wave, right? He fakes it. But the thing is, Olaf's cue is fucking, it's, you hit it for free, by the way. You hit it for free. If you aim it, there's no juking it at this distance. Keep in mind as well here, Shun is going to base and go topside. What on earth is this? Keep in mind here, it seems like Bin is just more aware than BB of his cooldowns. He walks away, doesn't let him ax him again. Bin spacing. Bro, there's only Zeus and Bin that do this, man. Like, only Bin and Zeus do this shit, man. They are fucking nasty, bro. They are nasty, man. Oh, the, 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 the lane is already over. I don't know, like, BB ax here is quite bad. I want to kind of hear what he says. I'm curious. Let me hear what he says. Connected, which is like, there's no angle here. Uh, he literally just griefed his entire lane, like just, just like this, just like this. I mean, what is this guy doing? Like, this is this is really troll. Like, he just, like, look, like, obviously, it is really troll. There's like, no I mean, explanation this is nothing for it. special by Bin. Like, obviously, if you look at this, like, right here, right. So Bin was able to dodge the Q, which is nice, right. So that Q was that dodge is really nice. But this one, this one is standard, right? He just, you know, trying to dodge. It's normal. And like, this is this nothing is special that reacted. He's obviously just gonna auto Q and then auto E, right? Go behind. This is cycle. This is cycle. I mean, this is standard. Anyone this is cycle. This. this is this like, is crazy. Broken blade is literally just griefing. This is crazy, by the way. This is nuts. This is really nuts. This is this is crazy, by the way. This is. <laughs> I don't. There's no explanation for what this is doing here. This this is just. Like he just ran down the whole lane. It's just over. <laughs> like it's not it's just over. And this this is just over. I'm not gonna lie. It's just plain plain and simple over. There's there's no it's over. Hello, hello, hello. Hello. I think I I, I removed I removed the th threshold because it seems like my microphone is cutting off. Hello, hello, hello. Okay. Yeah, the lane the lane is over. Holy, this dive was insane. By the way, this dive was was crazy good.
Hey. Wait, let's play some music so this is like less sad. And I don't mean no vacation. Why, why, why is BB trying to win the game here, bro? Uh, yeah, BB is completely fucked off with that trade that we saw, guys. I don't know why Broken Blade is trying to win the game here, man. His axes are flying, bro. Bro is two levels down and then bases on the cannon. He's two levels down. Oh, he's just fucking, he's done with the game. He's just done with the game. Well, to be fair, there's nothing else to watch. He doesn't crash this wave and the lane is over. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's look at that mid dive, bro. This is this is crazy, by the way. Like, let's be honest, okay? There's so much contradiction in this fucking shit play, okay? Not shit play, sorry. It just pisses me off. It just pieces pisses me off. It does piss me off. So, if the turret is treating Nico as if she's a minion. Then why doesn't uh, Nocturne get the aggro if it's a minion? This, this makes no sense, bro. This really makes no sense. It's a really cool play. It's a really... Nico is a champion but gets the characteristics of the minion. But, but he gets the inventory of the minion. You know minions have items? Minions have items. But he, he gets the inventory of it. That makes him take reduced damage. It's fine if he dodges like a Kali Q passive or something like this, right? Cool. That's a cool interaction. But this, bro, this is bullshit. This should be disabled. Look at my turret shots he tanks, bro. He tanks fucking four turret shots and he's half HP. And then Yike takes it over and takes no damage from the turret shot. Nah, it's a feature. Nah, this is, this is stupid. It's like, if Nocturne takes the aggro because the turret thinks that the minion... That's fine. That makes sense. But this is dumb. Nocturne also invaded bot side. All is cool, all is nice. We already watched top. Top is fucked. Top is completely doomed. Let's see after that situation, top, what happened. This is kind of cold. This is kind of cold. Mickey with the flash into, into lethal. This is kind of nice. Elk doesn't flash. Blood lost the cannon minion. Base super late. And now he's slow pushing. BB is freezing again. Top is completely GG, guys. Complete GG.
No, basically, there, every every pro team gets the bug list. They tell us this is allowed. Uh, this is not something that you uh, you're not allowed to do. Like they tell us these are bugs you're not allowed to do, and if you do, you get fucked. There's a lot of things like that. If that bug list was public, then people would just abuse it on on live, right? Here as well, Caps. Caps is fucking... Caps is fucking range understanding of Nico R was fucking gorgeous, man. Really, really gorgeous. Yeah, Bin broke the freeze, so God bless for BB, you know, he's two levels down. Look at Bin's rage control, bro. Look at Bin's rage control. Like, so something so subtle as here, right? On his E out, he has empowered. You see that shit, man? So now he's, he has empowered spells on a wave that is neutral. Really, really good. You can abuse bugs that are not listed. For sure you can, yeah. Stop glazing Ben. Him stomping BB is not impressive. Let me see. Let me see how many messages this guy has. 80, 80, 67 messages. Let's see. It's doomed for JDG, trust me. I see T1 beating JDG. T1 dodge Gen G, so it's free. LCK, LCK finals. Stop glazing Ben, he says. <laughs> of course. T1 fan. Here comes the fucking crocodile. Bro, how many fucking times? Like, Bin? Bin throws the whole fucking lead here top by, like, roaming. Like, it's gonna happen, bro. Like, he just starts roaming for no fucking reason at all. So he TP'd here for the Drake fight. He got a kill on Nocturne. God bless. It, uh, Olaf got a plating and got to clean base, right? So Olaf got to fucking breathe a lot, man. Chat so cringe. Bro, you're fucking cringe, mate. It's like to unironically use the word cringe in these contexts because people are doing something that you don't like. Bro. But it's a very, you know, freedom of speech is uh, alive and well in the chat, so I'm not going to ban you. This is where the journey of, uh, journey of Notre Dame happens. So first and foremost, Mickey... Mickey is so fucking good here, man. Mickey, his, uh, his way of isolating the Jace and using the ult on him to set up the kill on him is beautiful. Very nice. Mickey also survives. Really well played here. Then Renekton here, this is where he kind of gives up the whole game because I think that Renekton here, like trying to look for something here, I think this is delusion. I think this is really, really delusion. I, like Ben wanted to fight. Ben wanted to fight because he had gold drinker base. But uh, my man was searching, looking for ghosts. And look at all of condition. He got four plating stop. Four plating stop. And at 14 minutes, we're going to have the MasterCard uh, gold thing, right? It's coming up now. Look at this. This looks this is pretty fucking funny. This is a bit late, but I think the tower doesn't treat Nico as a minion. It probably just the unique effect of the kind of item kicking in. Since when does Nico inherit the items of the person she she picks up? You realize the 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 flow of all of this, right? It's like something is wrong there. Because if she's a minion, then she shouldn't get the aggro. But she got the best of both worlds, where she keeps the tanking and she reduces the damage. And that's not okay, you know? It needs to be one. If Nocturne got the aggro, that's cool. Look at the MasterCard economy. You have caps with the dives and kills on Yagao. Super, super good. 
You have the jungle situation as well. Yeah, getting ahead, you know. It's about the tower not dealing more damage to non-champions. But the thing is, the reason that is the case for minions is because of the items they have. Minions have items. And all of a sudden, Ben is just a kill ahead. Thank you for the platings. Fucking Broken Blade, keeping it, keeping it real. He's just straight up keeping it real. I like the flash here from Ben. Bro, Ben does some good ass flashes. Ben would be 1.5k, 2k gold ahead for sure. Not sure what Mickey's cooking here, man. He's, uh, can't really justify why he's here. Like, Nocturne is hovering on both sides, and, uh, Billy Billy are just contesting S3 around mid. Mickey just dies for free, uh, which leads to Herald. And uh, Caps also TP'd on bot, so they know about this, but there's no dive on bot because he can't turn into a cannon minion. And of course, Nocturne doesn't have enough damage to kill Nocturne. I mean, Renekton. Alright, we we'll continue. TB also got to the lane against the weak Jace, so he uh, just fucking recovered all of the CS. So this condition, just to talk about the condition of the game, is very good. So Luke Kaiser's item, uh, you have Nico in really good condition, uh, Nocturne is really strong too, and it's not a super easy, it's like, Renekton is very good against the likes of Nico and Nocturne, uh, but I think that Kaiser, uh, with all of the CC that she has, has enough DPS to kill him, because of course CC applies one Plasma stack. I think it's called Plasma. As far as I can tell, the items are just cosmetic. No, they're not cosmetic. I think Riot has legit coded it like this. Yeah, Mickey. Yeah, this is... Don't fight in Satan's armpit, guys. He just got uh, rooted and tried to be sour, and uh, he got screwed. He died and entered. At least he got Drake from before. Alright, rock and roll. Not sure what the fuck this was either, bro. Like, Yagao, use Flash. Like, already won some. He's 0-3. Uh, Yag lost his mind here. This is what we call Satan's armpit, yeah. Let's take a look at this fight. TP from bottom side, Olaf on the flank. Nocturne has ult. Yeah, I think this was very nice usage here. Look at the usage here from Caps, okay? I have never seen a player be so fucking aware of Nocturne ult. Like, look, look, at, look at Caps. Look at Caps. Look at Caps. Look at Caps, guys. Zoom. Ah. And this fight is only close because my man Nocturne didn't use W, bro. Ugh. They can't fucking R in. And then if I can use a stride breaker on the floor. But Caps plays it so fucking good, though. Caps is a beast. And then look at, look at, look at also Han Sama here. Look at where Hansama ults. Why doesn't he look to ult on the fucking Zeri to kill her? Like he needs to ult behind the Zeri and fucking murder her. Out of range? Out of range? She, oh, she got Maoka ulted, bro. She got Maoka ulted behind the Nocturne.
if he if he plays good and uses utilizes cleanse, I think he can reach. By the way, he can reach. It just he plays like a fucking plays it terrible, bro. He needs to walk some frames and he's in range. He can walk some frames and he reaches. By the way, I'm pretty sure he reaches. Rakan and Malka Ult bought way too much time against the fucking cleanse Kaiser, bro. But yeah, somehow this fight was close. Let me see what BB did. I'm curious what BB did. What's BB's timing here? BB lost Ghost from before. Oh, BB does what he can. We continue. I think last year at Worlds, Humanoid was better than Caps, but not this year. Even though Humanoid had a good Worlds. <laughs> Humanoid had a great Worlds. Can you rank the G2 players according to the performance in this tournament? I think Caps first, Mickey second, and then... They're all three, like... The rest of them are just the same, I think. Probably like. Yeah, let's continue with the game. That's good shit. I like this play. They just kill Yagao. The enemy doesn't have a lot of pressure on Nash. They have position on it. They have TP on caps. It's good stuff. Caps gets a tier 2 as well. The enemy doesn't pressure Nash at all. They don't pull the trigger. Really good. Yeah, I, I probably I would I would probably rate it like this, okay? I would rate it like this. I would rate it Caps, Mickey, Yike, Hans Sama, BB. That would be my rating. At least Hans Sama is pulling Draven Callista bands. BB doesn't play Rumble. I think that's a fair point. Yeah, I had stinkers. All three of them had, had stinkers. This was a really good find here from Mickey. I like this from Mickey a lot. Mickey is just on his goat ship. Here, I don't know, Hansama also ult placement. It's really troll. Like, he has to use fucking cleanse, bro. But honestly, he doesn't need to use cleanse. He just loses cleanse for no reason. It's a good find, but they end up burning a lot, you know. It's like, if you think about it in the grand scheme of things, right? It's like they use flash, flash, uh, cleanse, three ults, and Shun didn't lose anything, right? Yike is flashing because they think that Malka has flash. It's a very narrow window, right? And it's like Billy Billy are looking to posture to look for the fight uh, because uh, the enemy used a lot of ults and that's why they're pushing forward. But uh, it doesn't work this time around. And the key thing that I was scared about for me always was that I think this is a game definitely Zeri can carry. You like Nocton in this game? I think that uh, it's decent, yeah. Good into Jace. And uh, gives a blanket fog of war for, for Nico and Caps definitely utilizes as well. Here, this is just plain and simple, just really boosted. Uh, I, I, I don't know, like, it's, it's like the usage of their abilities, they, 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 they seem so unaware of what the situation... This is not... It's Elk, bro, not Ruler. Are you talking shit about Elk right now in the chat? Are you really talking shit about Elk in this chat?
nevertheless, this, this, this fight area, it's like they use all of their tools and they have nothing left for Elk. And this is the freest fight ever for Elk to, to carry in my mind. I think it's like, you, you tell me, look at Cap's flash ulting, but the thing is, he has to because they're fucking dying. They're fucking dying. This is not on Cap's, it was just a terrible fight to take, plain and simple. Yagao also plays it fucking good. But this is just, this is just really a troll. And I don't know what Kaiser is doing. Why is Kaiser in range of Maokai? And she's playing in the completely wrong pocket. Like she needs to kite to here, you know? Really bad pocket. As like here, Elk is about to murder everyone. Looking for this is good from Caps. Because I was saying it on the costume, I was like, yo, this, this Zeri is going to be able to kill them all. She has flash cleanse. If the enemy mis-executes their engage, she is going to murder everyone. I said this over and over again. And it's like, Billy Billy as well, they have such awareness when cooldowns are being burned. It's like, players at this level, they are going to fucking pressure you when, when you use your ults and cooldowns wrong. And this is not on caps, it's just a very bad idea to fight. It needs to fucking try to create some kind of, like, defense. They lose Nash and at least they have soul, right? Yeah, yeah, like, Kaiser really opens up the fight there. And uh, Zeri gets so much gold here for no reason. And even though G2 have, have um, soul, uh, definitely I think that with time, I think Maokai, Rakan, they are such value champs, you know? Maokai, Rakan really elevate your Zeri carry, right? And they scale super good. It's like Maokai, Zeri, and Rakan, I think they just outscale the counterparts uh, pretty hard in such a game. But even though they have mountain soul, it's not super decisive, you know? Uh, Yagao had one of the worst builds ever. I don't like the Serpent's Fang, and then after Serpent's Fang, he went Edge of the Night. Like, this is probably one of the worst Jace builds ever. Like, Yagao has had some disgusting builds at this World Championship, not gonna lie. Hey, did you guys see his fucking Oriana man? Like, Yagugu is fucking really griefing the builds. Yagao has been very disappointing, man. Very disappointing in this world. And I, I hyped him up a lot, you know. He's my boy. He's my boy and... He's, he's really made me sad. Like, last game he played good. The Talia game was good. Just fucking let him play Nico, Talia, Ari. Like, let him play these champs. Now this is really sweaty here, man. Like, go look at Zeri inventory, bro. She looks like a fucking monster. I don't know how Bin gets out of this, bro. It's crazy that he gets out of this, man. I thought when he stopwatched on his Sterak proc that he made a mistake here. Well, because the Sterak shield is like going out, you know? Then he just fucking gets out and 
Broken Blade. It's like the fight is really good. It's just that this this idea from Billy Billy is terrible. The enemy team has Kaiser 16, Nocturn Ult. It's a very, very bad fight. Very bad choice here by Jace to commit on this, right? Very bad. But Mickey, I don't know what the fuck Mickey is doing here. I think Mickey is trying to stop them from going on some shit. It's just stupid, right? And then as well, the follow-up here. I don't know why BB decides to fucking release the hounds here. Like he just completely unleashes. Like I don't know where he's going, bro. Where's, where's blood going, bro? Where's brother going? Where's blood going? Here as well. I don't know why Elk is like not ulting. It's like all I've committed so fucking hard. I don't know why you're not ult ulting. But he's just holding ult. He's just holding ult. And now he ults. I think he could be so stacked that he could have done so much dam more damage to BB. But Elk is fucking drifting, bro. It's just that you really need to attack everyone, everyone else in, in, in unison. You have to be really, really clever in terms of how you attack the enemy. The issue with this with this this move right here is that um yeah, Ben has TP, right? Ben has TP, Olaf is spawning. They have the initiative in the area, but it's a very tough situation to be in. Mickey is trying to commit to CC the, the Maokai. The smite, bro. The smite is scuffed, guys. The smite is very scuffed. I got so fucking scared, bro. <laughs> I just fucking spooked me, man. Boy. Uh, something that Billy Billy does so well, right, is that they are focusing on winning the fight. So they are playing for the fight. They don't get the steal and they just play to a position. They kill Caps before he gets the ult off. And then the CC on to Hansama. And even though Hansama has Elder, it just doesn't matter in the spot. Jack did smite, but he smote uh, at uh, 1293. Was that Maokai smite? Really? That was Maokai Smite. Oh. oh shit, you guys are right. <laughs> Fuck me, dude. So Yak played good. Yak played good. Unironically. Yak played good. Good by not smiting? Well, yeah. M Maokai smote and it wasn't lethal. Mao missed the smite. Mao, after Maokai missed, he could smite? Yeah, he could. But it's a very, like, bro. The fucking, it's a millisecond, bro. I think here Caps can position better. I think that he should. I think I think all of these co-homies from G2 side should be in the pit, you know. And then also, I think if they pull out the Drake and they hit it from here, I think it's way better position too. I think the fact that they, uh, the fact that they kite, they should kite this Drake out, I think would have been a lot better. And then they knocked an ult earlier, like. If they knocked on wood earlier, I think it would have been better. And if they pulled out the Drake, it would have been better too. But pulling takes time. No, it doesn't. Like barely. You're hitting with range champs.
I think also Nocturnal earlier could have been decising the size of that. Bibi was dead, so he just doesn't have TP. Mickey does the coolest play ever, man, in this game. Caps is drifting as a minion. Caps here, his range understanding, bro, is mental, bro. This is the second time he clips people like this. And then the full combo here, but he has GA, right? I don't know though, because at this point, my, my question is just that if they are outskilled, that's that's my, my main issue, you know, it's like, I think it's good to go for this, because I think actually, the game is very hard, I think they are giga outskilled, I'm not gonna lie, I think Zeri, Maokai, Rakan, they have scaled way too fucking hard in this game. Way too hard. They get this guy, and in all honesty, they should have lost the game here. They should have lost the game here. Kaiser died from Jace damage. Because here, the only reason this game is alive, because red side should be able to end, is the fact that Caps manages to kill. This game was over. <laughs> It was over. They would have ended. 100%. Like, look at the death timers of everybody, right? But I still think it's the correct play. Because they would lose the game, I think. And now, it's, it's the blessing. The biggest blessing. No cleanse on Elk and no GA. So it gives them options around the Elder that are spawning now. Such a blessing. Here, I think buying Zonias is really true. I think that you need death cap. I don't know why it's only here. I don't like it. I think it goes death cap. Your composition really needs your damage. And this is a game where you have so much CC on your composition. The plasma AP scaling is mental here. You would pop off completely. I think death cap is the way. I think Zonia doesn't give you anything. You have cleanse, you have flash. Here, Mickey the goat. Let's just look at Mickey's investment here, okay? We come out of the replay and Mickey is now in this area. He's chilling, he's chilling, he's chilling, he's chilling. He's going into the whoosh, he puts a ward. Mickey doesn't base, and he ease over the wall. Look at Mickey, bro. Special Agent Mickey. Super Mickey man. Kato's take was Zonia's was completely necessary to get full item and not sit on useless broken stopwatch gold. But then it comes back, right, to the stopwatch buy. And I don't want to go back and to see if he, he has stopwatch buy, but... Maybe, maybe it's fair. Maybe it's fair. The point is more... The point is more that... Um, it's like... Let's see when he buys Zonias, okay? He has stopwatch. Maybe he just fucking straight up buy stopwatch way too early in the game, even. Like, he buys stopwatch now? Maybe this is just fucking true. Maybe this is just fucking true. This, this is the problem. He buys stopwatch when it's nonsensical to buy stopwatch. But... But, I also understand why he wants to watch. Because he's fucking buying, he wants to be strong for the Drake fight. Right? It's a soul. So it's not, it's not crazy. It's not crazy. Right? He's just buying stopwatch because he wants it for, for Drake. And then it's a whole other analysis of gold distribution. Could he have fucking farmed better to... Could he, could he had more camps, more farms, so he based on Nash's Tooth in this moment? But I don't want to go so deep into the conversation. 
buying stopwatch here before the soul is perfectly reasonable. They finish soul, they get soul. They should they, they should be decisive, right? Here they they won the game. They won the game here, but they threw the game. And also he used stopwatch. And now he has broken stopwatch. And now the point that Cadrill made is perfectly fair. It's like if blood cannot finish death cap. If he cannot finish death cap here, right? Like he went into that fight with Zika's arm guard. Yeah, like hindsight is 2020, right? That's why, like, the stopwatch buy was good. Stopwatch buy was good. And then at that point, he's not gonna finish Death Cap. Probably Finnish Codex is better than Zika's arm guard. And then here, he wouldn't have gold for, for Abaddon's. So it makes sense. Kedril is right. Kedril is right for sure. I'm saying more. He would be way more fucking powerful in this moment if he had death cap. That's my point. Is it good? Because what do you stop watching? Uh, Baku, what are you amplifying toming? In most, most cases, if you win that soul fight, a soul fight stop watch is going to do more than, than amp tome. doesn't have much AP, death cap is better. Yeah, but but to be fair, to be fair, if he is in the position where he can sell, sell stopwatch and buy void because it's cheaper than death cap, that would have been better too. But they need to just kill elk, you know? And now, the thing I wanted to highlight, look at Mickey, man. Fucking James Bond Mickey, man. Look at him. Look at James Bond Mickey, man. Look how long he commits to the play, bro. He's been here for two minutes, son. Two minutes. And now he finds Yagao. They think that Caps is inting, but man is kiting them and winning time. Stop watches, and then they snack on the guy. Look at the timing of the Nocturnult as well. Nocturnult, and then fucking Mickey goes. To be fair, Billy Billy sold Elk. Bro, they didn't know Mickey was fucking buying him, bro. They didn't know that Mickey was fucking buying him. They had no fucking clue this fucking lizard is coming from this area, man. This is the only threat. And it's the window where he has no cleanse. And then he gets one shot. Really fucking great play. Caps and Mickey, bro. Didn't they see him on a ward? No. And then knocked and ulted, so the ward doesn't matter. Thoughts on bow and upset to KC? Would be sick. Bow, upset, Yamato Cannon, Targamas. Fucking Saken, Kabushad. Holy shit, what a team. A man can dream. A man can dream, guys. A man can dream. A man can dream. A man can dream. Bingo Bongo, this is they this this is a very hard situation to read. They spot everyone and they don't think in a million years that fucking he's gonna get bonked here by fucking no um, Lissandra. This is not about them fucking not bodyguarding because Caps looks like a fucking free kill. The only case where it isn't is if this fucking uh, Lissandra is fucking hiding in enemy jungle. The thing is, it's like they're even thinking about this, you know? They're fucking putting walls behind them and whatever. This is a brilliant, brilliant, brilliant flank. Brilliant. They did war just when he eat. No, they knocked an ulta to mask him. 
Keep in mind, they, they knocked in order to mask him. And the window was required because of the cleanse, lack of cleanse for, for the homie. Some people like the way you feel, some people want to kill the sorrow, some people want to feel with the popular now, what's my problem? I was in the dark room, loud tomb, looked at me, a bow soon. Holy Kendrick. He just fucking, he just, he just came into my soul. He just, he just entered my soul in this moment. That's crazy. Nah, guys, anyone who is coping about Billy Billy playing bad here is is really trolling, I think. Uh, so we move on to game three. This song is called Swimming Pools. All right, Billy Billy. Billy Billy. Kalista, Draven, Poppy, Zaya, Nico, Jax. Oriana, first pick. Oriana. But it's not that deep. You know, I was so scared that Ben would finally show his rumble. I thought he was about to show his rumble, you know, it would just fucking swoop in. I thought it was about to swoop in, you know. And then he would be like, guys, I would like to thank the Academy. For this Oscar, for my acting that I showed, that I've hidden Rumble my entire life. So they pick Rannickton. Poppy Jax is out. They have a good time. Azir Maokai. The reason this trade becomes worse is because Oriana has Javan on her side. That's what makes this whole trade worse. And the main issue here is that I think that G2 expose themselves. They don't play Javan. They don't play Javan. Because if you play, it's like if you play Rumble, Javan, Oriana, then you give Nico first pick and then you pick Javan and Oriana and you're very happy. The same way here, Javan, Oriana. Bro, if you don't play this at this tournament, you're going to be in trouble. You're going to be in trouble. More like why Bin is not picking up his 1-3 Camille, because his champion is not so strong right now. So they go Azir Maokag. Enemy slams Javan. And then they pick Renekton, and then they pick Kaiser on 3. I've been saying it for very long. If you pull up my, my Google slide, okay? You pull up my Google slide. You pull up my Google slide. The YouTube video I did on the meta, okay? What is fucking... What's happening? What kind of fucking drag? Why can't I drag? Whatever, I'll just go to place it. Here, right? Here, right? I highlighted Oriana, very strong blind pick answer. Jace, Azir, Syndra, you want to stand up, but strong to do me, Joker, Breaker, blah, blah, blah. I said, blah, 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 blah. But if you scroll down, right? If I scroll down to AD, right? Potential extension of bot lane meta. Kaiser, Kogma, Braum, and all of the above. Bro, you can play fucking anything, bro. You can play fucking anything into Kaiser and have final winning lane. No fucking joke, bro. Besides Ezreal. You can play so much shit and fuck Kaiser over. Same thing with Zaya. These two champions, they're very counterable. 
Why are people prioritizing them? Because you can play melee support with them. Melee supports are really OP. Really OP. We continue. What are you picking to Oriana if Azir isn't great? You have to pick like Nico Javan. Javan Rumble. That's an example, you know? It's like here, you don't play Javan, you don't play Rumble, you don't play... You, have, you ban Nico yourself. So Kaiser gets locked in, Alastair Filios gets banned, Rakan Rel, they banned like all of the melee supports and they pick Brom. So once again, it's like, this is the idea from game one, right? A Kogma Brom is really good into Kaiser, but not good into Zaya. But here they blind Brom because they know the enemy needs to pick a melee support with Kaiser. And here Mickey is like, what the fuck am I supposed to do in this game? Should I pick Nautilus and run down the whole game? Or I'm gonna fucking pick Bard and make it chuka chuka spicy? Very spicy. Very spicy. But nevertheless, right? I think the blue side is giga winning here. I think the draft is way fucking better, man. Way better, man. Way better. <laughs> Way better. Let's take a look at game three, guys. So, way to think. Uh, here, here the key thing, right, is that. Um, oh shit! I went too far. I went too far. Here the key thing is that the plan from Billy Billy, why they are invading like this, is that uh, they want to just late. They want to late invade with Ash Brom, but they are going so fucking early. The thing is, their bot lane is so fucking strong that if Maokai starts on blue, they can walk in here 2v3 and fucking fuck them up. But instead, bro, I don't know, like, they're going 106, bro. Like, I don't know, what the fuck are they doing, bro? I don't know, man. That is mental to me, bro. Mental. Absolutely mental what they're doing. But these psychopaths, they make it work somehow, bro. They make it work. Mickey needs to hold Q till the end of days, bro. Really needs to hold Q till the end of days. He cannot let the enemy flash his Q. He cannot. He cannot. And then the thing is, bro, Ash Brom are so much stronger than G2's champions. Mauka is fucking useless. Bard is okayish, but if you flash his Q, he's useless. Azir is ass. And Kaiser is nowhere to be found. I don't know where Kaiser is. What is Kaiser doing? I think Kaiser is running way too far back, man. I think, I think they are running way too far back, bro. Way too far back. I don't know, like, like Hansama is not tethering to his teammates at all. They flash on the homie, they kill him, bro. Then they continue, bro. Mickey is eating shit, bro. Elk played this beautifully, man. Beautiful from Elk. Absolutely neat. Key thing here, though, if we look at the aftermath, uh, Caps lost flash and TP. So Caps is fucked, bro. Like anyone talked about Caps like doing bad in this game? Like he is so fucked. So fucked. I this is terrible. I this is he's just rip bozoed. Really. I this is terrible. Fucking Yagao, TP's back has kill. Caps no flash. It's rough, man. Top lane as well. Even though BB, right? BB started E and he has cloth armor proportion. It doesn't it's not a decisive win. And top matchup. 
It's not a decisive win. He has three potions, an E start. It isn't like some, some giga win. They run out of gas, but a really good gank, right? Shun wanted to just pressure the Maokai, so he did three camps bot side and to cross into Maokai. Uh, this is big, right? And BB wastes time, and then Shun kites away, Shun kites away. And then... Um, did BB not... Oh, I thought BB didn't catch the boomerang. Crazy how crucial this fucking smite is, bro. It's like here, Yaik has the better burst with the Q, you know? And then Mickey the, the goat comes in to save the day. Yeah, I don't know. Yaik losing the smite battle here is so bad. Because, obviously, Shun gets HP back here. You see? Based on his health, you know? He gets HP back. This is was, was crucial. But, but Billy Billy, like, just how they play this game. I, 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 they are so psycho, bro. They are so psycho, man. It's like they fucking invaded Ash Brom like the way they did, bro. I don't think any other team would fucking do this ever in their life, in the fucking match point for fucking qualification to quarters. And then Shun, bro. Look how Shun is playing, bro. Shun is just with the biggest fuck you energy on the planet, bro. What the fuck, bro? Shun just timed the smite better with the fucking Mauka Q than the Mauka did. It's mental. Absolutely mental. I don't know, man. They, they are crazy. So yeah, like, BB's advantage is completely gone, guys. His, his advantage is not uh, decisive at all. I just want to make that clear. Kaiser as well, like, Ash and Braum, because Bart was on a journey. Kaiser, uh, she managed to crash a wave, and then her advantage now, Ash Braum will be able to get a base, so it's not that big of a deal, you know? Shun, out of base, did blue and went straight into enemy topside. He just went for the top dive. Enemy has no mega. These games are extremely uncomfortable for, um, for Maokai to play. The reason is because he can get fucked by the Javan and all of his teammates can be fucked by the Javan. Such a tempo in a game is way better for Javan. Maokai will always be useful, but he needs to be useful now. Nobody has flash. Nobody has anything. The game is way too fast for Malka. And then of course here. Easy pickings. And they kill BB. It's like this game, right? BB looks very bad. But it's like BB defended... The, 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 the blue with his team. Then he TP'd top. Then he defended the fucking red. And then he got dove. It's like, Clarks had a point in the coast stream. Uh, and the truth is, like, this game, like, he just got fucked by the situation. This Q is very crucial from Mickey. I think here, though, I think that you can W flash with Kaiser to guarantee this. But I Mickey kind of insists. The fact that this was close is a fucking disaster. Continue. 
not as completely fucked in the game. 40 CSD at 15 uh, for BB in this series. Uh, they managed to kill Elk over and over again. Very important here. Hansamo was trying to find 6, but he didn't get it right. Elk using Flash. Really big. Now Bin shows his big fucking crocodile dingus to secure this Drake for his homies. That's the beauty of Bin, man. He just walks down into mid and makes his presence known. And uh, manages to secure the Dretsky. Caps ease out. No, for sure, yeah, that's true. He did take a fucking shit trade. Seth Curry Sim has a has a point. We did see that on camera. Maybe our brother here on the on this video will show us how how shit he trades here. That was such a terrible trade here that happens. He gets his bomb plating proc'd already, which is not good. Trying to squeeze for the melee. Here it comes. The trade of death, guys. The trade of death, guys. Where Ben just fucking completely hypnotizes him. Look at this hypno hypnotization from Ben. He gets the three, dashes through, and once again, look at Bin's rage control here. Look at Bin's rage control. I always get memed for the rage control, but look at that rage control. He eased through the whole wave and gets Empowered W. And this is an Empowered W with full Conqueror. And then, bro, look at him fucking dance. Look at him dance, bro. Ah. Oh. Oh my lord. Oh my lord, bro. Ben is fucking. He's got that stank, man. Oh my lord. Fucking beautiful. In it, fam. Barno 6. Storm raids a Kaiser. This is the game Hansama needs to carry. Will he do it? Let's find out, guys. Here, no reason to do the humanoid nose. Uh, this is just poor form from your boy. Poor form. Yeah, doesn't need to be said, guys. Top is fucked. I'm just gonna check how, how our boy got double buffs. Oh yeah, we missed this fight, sorry. I think BB is playing in the wrong pocket here. Like he had time to move down. I don't know why he's playing in this pocket. A G2 could have gotten out. Back. All right, here we go again. And I don't know what the fuck they're doing, by the way. Like, they're completely trolling the dive. I don't know what the fuck is happening. <laughs> they need to W into fucking EQ of Javan into one shot him so he doesn't get mega and then just R him. I don't know what the fuck Shun is doing, bro. He's just straight up inting. I just, this is straight up troll. Yeah, this is also G2. I don't know what the fuck they just did. Escape, escape, escape. At least the outcome is fucking good. The outcome is really, really good. 
if they want to dive that, I think the ideal way to play it, the ideal way to play it, I think is just um, straight up, just ult them the moment Brom is, and then kill them out of the Brom. E. That's my take. Hey, keep in mind, I also mentioned, I think that this game, I think draft cap is still fucking massive. I think it's not easy for red side to win. It's like they don't have that level of synergy, you know, that they had in the second game. And they don't have like crazy tools for them to win. I don't know what blood is doing. I, I have no clue what this is. BB. Ah. Ah. The thing is, it's like the lane assignment is ruined, you know? And they can't fix it because blood the hell, he just fucking died. And here comes the Armada. Not sure what the fuck this flash was from Hans Summer. But okay. I know Bromi, but it's a fucking. It can just move, you know? He has cleanse as well, like, it's fine. Everybody's joking. Bro in the chat thought I didn't know how it Bromi works. Meanwhile. I guess we just look at the montage of death now from G2. They are completely outskilled. Ash recovered in the game. And um, this is the moment where Rift, like using Bardult on this turret actually really, really saves, man. Really, really saves. Like, like Mickey just fucking dies. And Herald doesn't lose any HP from killing the first turret. So now J2 lose their whole base. I love to break it all. Pour it on the ropes and let me fall. My, 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 my. And I told you to pick Rumble And I told you to ban Zaya And I told you to ban Jax And I told you to practice Javan And in the morning you would have won draft But now you are going home What am I supposed to do When you can't even play the meta? Skinny draft. <laughs> this song is called Skinny Love. All right, let's let's move on. You know, Mickey only runs it down when the game is fucking doomed, by the way. Like, he knows the game is doomed, he's just fucking trying to cook. But the thing is, it's like this Bard pick on 5 is exactly the same as the fucking Alistair pick on 5. Bro, it's like the draft is doomed, or like the Silas pick on 5 
Well, in the Weibo game, you know? But yeah. We'll fall, fall behind, of course, Broken Blade. We'll fall behind, guys. Broken Blade. All right. Uh, as as the final event, guys, let's take a look at the journey. I think the journey of Mad and BDS is quite uninteresting. Let's focus on Fnatic, okay? Let's focus on Fnatic. If we look at Fnatic's whole year, right? I think, I think the start that they had was terrible, right? It's like if we talk about the EU, EU, Europe this year, right? If we think about the most important things, the aspects, right? The aspects that are crucial, right? Uh, let's just make this very large, cover the whole screen, and let's do that. And we're gonna draw on, draw it red. So, so we have GMs, GMing. We're gonna call it GMing. Solo queue. All right. Players slash winners slash elite, okay? Elite players, very specific elite, okay? Jamming, solo queue, uh, scrim, call it scrim access. Um, you have um, scrim access, and then you have also, of course, um, Player base. Format. Innovation. Okay. So how do you determine the strength of a region? Okay. Right. How do you determine the strength of a region? It is through these ones. Right. Maybe there's something that I'm forgetting right now, but this is this is where I'm at, right? So when we think of elite players, right? Great players, they get great great players. Think about it in Europe, right? Jankos is the goat jungler of Europe. There's a lot of Polish junglers. I don't think that's by accident. I think that's because they had a role model that they looked up to and they wanted to pursue that too. Right? Let's say it's an accident or coincidental. If we look at mid laners, we had the Frogen who was spearheading the movement, and we had so many Danish mid laners that followed him and were also, of course, uh, Danish and they were great mid laners and they loved the Nivea, right? Bjergs and Caps and so forth, right? And I think that great players beget great players, right? Faker. In Korea, you look at the lineage of mid laners that came after him, and of course, when you get to play against these players and your pursuit is to beat this player, then of course, this has an impact on the players that are produced. When you have Uzi in the LPL, the AD carries that are going to follow the line of Uzi and are pursuing to beat him, they are, of course, going to be fucking legendary at the point where they do. The same way Caps eventually overtook Frogan, right? And now Caps is the guy, right? My point here is that great players beget great players. If a region is winning, if a region is winning, then of course, uh, great players beget great players, right? Solo queue is just the quality of solo queue and how much honor is bestowed onto solo queue. Solo queue, its value is like the dollar, okay? The value of solo queue is dependent on the belief of the value in solo queue. When there is too many things that undermine the value of solo queue, then it inherently will go down in value because the perception of it is worse. The perception of Korean solo queue is very high, so the integrity of it is maintained better. There's a lot of places where if you play master games or whatever in Korean solo queue, the majority of it is way worse than other regions. 
But at the top end, the game's a really, really good quality. Because the culture for solo queue and the importance that is put on ELO in Korea has maintained itself. But if you look at what, what solo queue has gone through over the years, there's been match, match fixing due to betting websites. There's been ELO inflation problems. There's been so many issues with solo queue that has fucked up the whole ELO system. I would like a big reset. But I just wanted to highlight that is that the value of solo queue is determined by everyone's perception of it. Everyone thinks that EU West is garbage. And as long as everyone believes that, it's always going to be. Right? I would like a full reset. Right? GMing. Very crucial detail. Right? You can have a lot of great players in a region, but they could all be on different teams. This can hurt a, the chances of a region coming, going deeper into a tournament. Right? Plain and simple. Like, for example, now, if you look at the players that are not actively playing and were not competing, if you look at the elite players coming out of Europe, right? You have the likes of Nemesis, you have the likes of Buipo, you have the likes of Wunder. They are not playing, right? Inspired is another great player, right? And then this extends, right, to format, right? This extends to format. Because right now, it's going to be 18 years plus. 18 years plus. This is going to hurt the region competitively. How many? There's been many great players that were at the point that they were 17 dominated at the World Championship. Right? Bin, Jackie Love, PayPal, Pays. Fuck my life. I think Uzi even, right? Uzi when in season two? Like how old was Uzi then? GMing can definitely be better, right? If you think think about EU GMing, if you think about EU GMing this year, right? If you look at fucking for example Fnatic, right? The winter split was terrible. They managed to save themselves with the Noah Trimby acquisition, right? This was a big save. But then you look at Koi. They were the champion in summer. What the fuck did they do? Right? Excel managed to recover. Team Heretics managed to recover. But I think that's tied to the format. Right? So it's like Koi died. So Fnatic got saved. Right? Excellent Team Heretics. These are two teams that managed to use their off time to get an edge. Mad was fine. Like all things considered, Mad had a fine year. Results wise, Mad was the second most accomplished team. Right? And then you have Vitality. I don't know how to begin with Vitality, bro. Like, this is just... I don't know. I think this is just gross mismanagement because I think I look at that roster and it's mind-blowing gross mismanagement right like someone needs to be fired right what other teams do we have help me help me BDS SK these were more on the budget side right they had moments where they were fine it's like you can't really complain about the likes of BDS and SK right Astralis. So, Koi died. Excellent team heretics. I think that uh, they only got an opportunity due to the circumstance, right? They made some good changes, right? They started off on a very, very bad foot. Let's be honest, right? A lot of these teams, they had to sack a whole fucking half a season, okay? In order to get to the point where they figured shit out. We had here fucking Eve, Evi, Ruby. Here we had the whole Targamas Viteo fucking fiasco thing that happened, right? It's like, I was already saying back then, you know? 
I was saying back then, like, this Exodus is not going to work out. There's too many passengers on this team. I was saying. Too many passengers on this team. Internally, I don't know what the fuck happened. Right? But it's like, if you look at, if you look at where we started in spring, bro, if we look at where we started in spring, like, what the fuck was happening in Europe? You had Astralis, a winter is what I meant, sorry. Winter, right? The starting point in winter for Europe, how did we end up with these rosters? So we, we had Reckless, Le Reckless Rocks. We had Koi, right? They, got, they, they, they just, uh, they released Odoamne and then whatever, right? And Team Red is a heavy ruby. Mad was solid and competitive. Vitality was okay-ish, right? But but Kai's and Neon, I don't know what the fuck they were doing. I don't know what was happening with these two. I, I really don't know what happened with these two. And then BDS and SK, and then Astralis, of course, made the changes, right? Because in the beginning, they had uh, a boy. What's his name? Right? I'm just talking, in the beginning of of winter and bleeding into spring the the setups that these the setups that these teams a lot of the teams came in came in on you know was terrible they recovered well in summer right but the fact that we had such a shitty start point is kind of crazy you know What's up with that? So we had Mad. Mad was complete. And then G2 was complete. But all the other teams, like, well, well, how is this the start point? Yeah, BDS, oh, sorry, BDS and SK, I put them in a box here together because they, I think I'm fine with BDS SK. I, I am happy with BDS SK. They get the golden star. I tried to make a star. These guys are okay. I give them a green box, okay? Just to highlight it, okay? It's not a... a, 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 a and, and I think these matter, right? These things matter, right? It's like the start point for, like, this was a very rough year for Europe. A lot of elite players coming out of Europe were not playing. This was a very bad year on the GMing side. And now the next cycle will begin, right? We're going to have the Elioia super team. We're probably going to have a different super team made with perks as well, right? We're going to have the Elioia Spanish Armada team. We're going to have KC come into the mix. We're going to have G2 maybe make some changes or keep, keep going. Team Eretics have a good foundation to build on, right? Maybe Kaiser will be revitalized on, of course, Team Eretics. You know, there's, there's some opportunity there. But I wanted to highlight this, right? That Fnatic managed to save themselves, right? Coming into summer. They got Noah Trimby, right? Noah Trimby, that was a massive save. XL, they made good changes and they had like... A good meta read, right? Beautiful for them. Team Eretics made changes. They got Viteo into the picture. And they got Flacket into the picture too, right? And then Mad Lions, they had some internal issues. But like roster-wise, what kind of changes are, you know? And then it's like Vitality. They speak for themselves, right? And it's just a lot of things were kind of random, you know? It's like for teams to rely on making big changes mid-season... It's unheard of in the past. I'm telling you guys, very unheard of. You couldn't make big roster moves in the past, and a lot of players are locked in their contracts in the ERLs. So to rely on that is a dangerous proposition. Because a lot of these changes here relied on other things collapsing. Vettio was a heist from Excel into Team Eretics. Noah, Noah was a good pickup, and then Trimby was stolen from, of course, Koi, or traded. Radvian. 
So when I'm highlighting the GMing, right, it's just that the outcome of where t players are placed. And the LCK has had years of like that, and the LPL has had years like that, right? When you think of LCK 2018 or 2019, that was kind of a, a, a downtrending year, and they needed to fucking unleash 2020. 2020, we had uh, Korea, Deft, Chovy piecing together. And then you had, of course, Dumb one, right? And then all of a sudden, it fucking re-stabilizes itself. And the thing is, it's not only on GMs because market conditions can impact things too. That's why it's like when teams were player-driven, they could make arguments for players to join the team at a cheaper price. I assure you that 2019 G2 was not an expensive roster. That's crazy to think about, right? Very crazy to think about. At the time, Caps was not expensive as far as I know. But nevertheless, I've highlighted this, I've highlighted this. I've also talked about this, right? Great players get, get, beget great players. Scrim access. Being able to scrim against the best teams on both sides. I have to add a little caveat here. It's not easy. It's not easy to actually scrim Chinese teams as a Korean team. There are ping issues. You need VPNs. It's not super easy. It's not super clean. I'm going to make that clear. When I was in Korea, maybe things have changed. When I was in Korea... Screaming against Chinese teams was quite the chore, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't smooth at all. It wasn't comfortable. Caps wanted to join G2. Perks was, Perks was manifesting the super roster. 2018, they had Jankos Wunder. Jankos Wunder. Mickey came off a shitty Misfits year 2018. And then Perks said to Caps, we are going to win everything. And then they said, here, Caps, take some fucking peas and broccoli and whatever. Uh, you, you are here to win. These are players that prioritize fucking winning, you know? And yeah, Perks almost fulfilled that fucking promise. So scrim axis, right? It's like LPL, LCK, you know, they have access to each other. You know, there's a thorough symbiosis of ideas, right? This is very neat as well because they don't actively compete against each other in the middle of the year, which is super, super smooth. LPL in 2019 was not so good yet. Let's dissect that. IG completely collapsed 2019. Memesai. They completely collapsed. That part is fair. Coming into the tournament, coming into the tournament, LPL wasn't super hyped. So if this is his point, I think that's fair. LPL wasn't super hyped coming into 2019 Worlds. Player base. Player base is crucial. Very crucial. Having a big having having a big player pool to choose from, only 001% is like okay, even a smaller percentile, but you get my point. Bigger pool of ch players. The, the, this is the pool that fucking teams are importing from. The best players go to play in the LCK and the LPL, and then uh, we get some knockoffs. We get some knockoffs imported. Unless they're Huni, Berserker, there's def or Bo, there's definitely cases where players are really fucking insane. 
Really, really fucking insane. If Perks did an ego and played ADC for one more year, you would have won it. No. No. I can tell you, I, I scrimmed Dam one. I scrimmed Dam one and G2 didn't have the same fire. G2 2019, right? What did they have? 2019 G2, what did they have going on for them? They had perfect GMing, okay? Perfect GMing. They had five elite fucking players peaking at the same time. And they had innovation. I didn't get to that point yet. I didn't get to that point yet. But innovation is crucial. They were ahead of the curve. They were ahead of the curve, which made them an outlier. But everything that was special about G2 2019 became the norm 2020. Became the fucking norm 2020. Innovation. Innovation is crucial too, right? So format. It's like the BO3 formats of LPL and LCK, for competitive purposes, are f superior. They are superior, okay? For commercial purposes, if, if we look at the financial side of the LEC, I understand and agree fully why we shouldn't do it. The same way I understand the 18 year plus topic, okay? The same way I understand the 18 year plus, because the longevity and the economy of the league needs to be a priority. It needs to be a priority. The product of the league needs to survive. The teams need to survive. The cost to run the LEC for one day, I'm sure it costs 200k, 300k one day of LEC. If you spread that out more, terrible. The broadcast wouldn't have the same pizzazz and there's a lot of days that are straight up fucking murderous. Shouldn't they switch to a cheaper country? That's also a fucking big conversation. You know, the fact that it's in Berlin, like if LEC was in like Poland, uh, like it would be rock and roll, you know, it would be fucking cheap as fuck, you know. Nevertheless, format. Innovation. Innovation is having vision for what the next evolution in the meta is. Mickey is a good example of this. Mickey is very, very smart. Caps and Mickey are very smart of finding ways to progress the meta. The meta is only so until someone finds a way to break it. Then that becomes the meta, right? Every blind pick is super strong until it gets nerfed or too hard countered, right? Barrel 2020. We scrim against 2020 Damon, right? The reason I say that G 2019 G2 was outliers. So I am in sandbox. I am in sandbox. We are screaming against fucking Damon, okay? These guys, they played the fucking craziest shit top Wukong top into our NAR and they picked Pantheon bot and they flashed on our mid laner level 1, bro. They were fucking in the zone, bro. They were in the zone. They were really, really ahead of their time. What Damon did so well was that they understood positioning in fights better than anyone else. And they understood the Drake meta better than anybody else. But at the same time, GMing, that roster had five fucking elite players fucking peaking at the same time with insane synergy. Ghost was perfect for that team. Ghost is not an impressive player. But he was right for this team. Maybe Deft would have worked too. They needed the most selfless AD carry that didn't care about the limelight at all. And didn't want to, didn't want to do anything. What does GMing mean? I already explained it. Re rewind. It's going to be terrible if I have to explain it every time someone new comes in. GMing is basically the, the, how the rosters are being put together before a season starts. That's the easy explanation. But we screamed against Damon, bro, they were innovators. Innovators. In other regions, when a team is competitive and does well, they're going to download you and try to beat you. Do you think that Korea was happy about losing against 2019 G2? No. No. The thing is, Damon, they took some time. 
That one took some time. That one took some time. In spring, they were not that impressive. In summer, they ramped up well, right? So, I bring all of these points up, right? Is that EU is at a significant disadvantage. Because all of these things will always favor LPL and also the LCK. And also, of course, culture. I didn't add it, but let's add it. Culture is something that I didn't add. Culture. But that speaks for itself. I don't need to... I don't need to... Uh, I don't need to talk about it, right? Culture speaks for itself, right? It's like you have all, like everyone on the team in the LCK, they're all Korean. And also, I think that they are, like what it means to be a pro player is at such a fucking high standard, right? And then additionally, I think that how players interact with each other, they naturally really care for each other. They naturally really love for one another. And the focus is solely on playing the game. Right? It's the fo sole focus is playing the game. Right? It's like, there, you have the big brother culture where everyone cares for one another. There is love there naturally. And also, it's like the focus is fucking winning. It's super fucking clear, man. There's no ego. Right? So, all of these things are favored for the LCK and the LPL. But keep this in mind. Keep this in mind. Just because it is, doesn't mean that an outlier can't be recreated. The point is that the outlier that will be created to win the World Championship is much more likely to come out of the LCK and the LPL. But I'm not saying it's impossible for Europe. My point is, the gap was never closed it will never be closed never but there is a lot of circumstances of situations where outliers are created right and the way you need to be an outlier needs to be that maybe you innovate in terms of how you gm Maybe there's an innovation in terms of how your practice methods are. Maybe in terms of how you scrim. Maybe there's an innovation to be done there. Maybe there's an innovation to be done in terms of how you set up the culture. Because there are certain things that are deeply, like, rooted in things. These are the ways you need to find an edge. Uh, Synchro, I, I wish I could answer this, but currently, like, I am in the middle of off-season conversations. But I think that what people are suggesting in chat, I think it's in that direction, you know? In that direction. It's like Caps and Mickey are number one go-to, right? For top lane, for top lane, right? It's like, it, I, I, think, I think the issue for me... AD is such a problem. AD is such a problem. We have good ADs regionally, but AD is a problem. It's like you say top, but I don't think top is as big of an issue as AD. That's the problem. The thing is, Wunder is a G, man. I, I see Wunder do well. It's like, you look at the World Games, Wunder laning against fucking Zeus. He's doing fucking well, by the way. 2022. Personally, I think that the issue are coaches and their drafts. The thing is, a lot of these fucking drafts, is because of the lack of player strength. So, let's talk about G2, right? Let's tie all this together to G2. I want to highlight, right? Let's pull up the tweets from... Uh, can someone link me the tweets of Roma? 
Roma, G2. Alright, there it is actually. Click to see spoiler. I want to see the spoiler, bro. Oh, not this. Bro, like, what is this? All right, let's take a look at this. So I don't think preseason winter. I think so. So a lot of people ask me about this, right? If we if we look at the the year through the lens of G two, G two did so many fucking things right, right? G two did well the entire year, right? They dropped the ball against Mad Lions. That was a very that was a very very bad job, I think. Dropping the ball against Mad Lions. They could have got gotten the triple, and they could have done well. They got punished for their shit at MSI, playing against better teams. All good for me, right? They got beaten by Genji. Genji is a fucking strong team with a good roster, right? They got beaten by Genji and they got smoked by Billy Billy, right? Then coming into summer, they readjusted, they improved their play, they fucking grew, they did a really, really good job, right? Uh, coming into World Championship, the World Championship is like, was a very bad tournament from, from G2. I think that they underperformed, right? I think that Caps and Mickey showcased that they can clutch it out when it's necessary. And G Caps and Mickey showcase that they are elite of the elite. But the other three are fucking strong, fucking great in Europe, but not good enough to compete with the best at the World Championship, right? And it's tough because this is a moment in time, right? They played two weeks and then the tournament is over. And this is what they're going to be judged by for super, super long. In the conversation of scrims, all right, there's a big conversation about scrims being fucking useless, whatever the fuck. Yo, G2 became so much fucking better because they try harder than scrims and they try to get the most out of it, right? I think that's super, super important. I think that they revitalized the scrim culture in Europe and I think that was really, really good. Really, really good, right? But scrim results don't fucking mean shit. Okay? Scrim results don't mean shit. And I don't think this is why Roma released this. I think Roma releases this. First, it was about the whole topic of teams in Europe cancelling. Right? And they fucked shit up. Okay? They fucked shit up. At the end of the season, I think this was to highlight that G2 really try hard for their fucking life. Okay? They really, really try hard for the fucking life. And he wanted to highlight how hard these fucking players did. How hard they worked to get to this point. But the result doesn't reflect on that. Right? I think that was the crucial point about this. That he wanted to highlight, as a team, we fucking did so so good right in order to fucking perform they really really worked their fucking ass off they had a good system in place but the result didn't fucking show up in the end and the thing is i rated this team coming into the tournament as the ninth best the ninth best that was my rating and the truth is right the truth is G2 didn't have a good tournament. Even if they beat Daman, even the, if they beat Weibo, these games were not good by any stretch of the imagination. I think that Mickey and Caps had a really good tournament, but I think that Bibi, Hansama and Yike really had an underwhelming performance. And that, you know, that in the end, that in the end is a tough pill to swallow. But in the end, this is the, this is the game, right? You're taking, you're, you're, you're going... You're going through the motion of the entire year and then you have to fucking perform when it matters, right? That's the nature of the game. Five players need to peak at the same time. They need to have energy at the same time. And you're dealing with a lot of variables. This is a team game without substitutions. No substitutions. So there's a lot of risk. G2 stole this game from Damwon, but they also gave it away, right? They also gave it away. So that's fine. Fair and square, they beat Damwon. Damwon has a lot of issues. Kellen is not a strong player. Kana is a terrible player. 
Okay, that's fine. I think G2. Okay, they beat Damwon. I think they can, you can you can easily say after this tournament. I think that they can, they are like, you know, decent. But the nature of B1 still is they got Oriana, they got the Draven, and they got Maokai. This is a crazy one, two, three to give to a team that is G2. I really think Kana is good though, to be honest. I think we have some trolls in the chat. So I'm just going to focus on my own train of thought and we're going to go, okay? So Oriana, Draven, Maokai. This is a crazy one, two, three to get if you're G2. Anyone that makes does research on G2, like Nico Ban is fair, but Kesante Ban is straight up fucking troll, okay? So Oriana, Draven, Maokai is a crazy one, two, three to get if you're G2. Right? And the same thing can be said for G2's game against Weibo. They get Oriana Zaya Rakan. Right? That is crazy. Right? Completely fucking nuts. This is some insane one, two, threes that G2 got in the BO1s. And what I said always in my assessment of G2 was, guys, if they win, the best, most important thing is G2 as a team, they prep well for a for BO1s. I think. That this is where G2 can do damage. If they are lucky in the draws, they can win the BO1s and then they will have three BO3s to win in order to qualify. This was a draw that G2 got that they should have fucking qualified through based off of my rating system. Okay? We come into the Genji matchup. Here, the massive flaw of giving up Zaya Rakan was deplorable. Deplorable. Game one definitely could have been won. Ezreal, Lissandra, they do fine in lane, but then just the jacks on five is too fucking detrimental. Key things that we already know about G2 and their performance at this World Championship. Three champions with some of the highest presence at this entire tournament were never picked by G2. What are those champions? Jarvan, Rumble, Zaya. You cannot fucking not play these champions. How can you not fucking play this? How can you not fucking play these three champions? That's a fucking massive flow. And then also, additionally, right? Additionally, right? If we just look and think about their opposition, right? Their assessment of their opposition was insanely poor. Genji getting Zaya Rakan is insanity. Getting it twice is... What's a crazier word than insanity? Really fucked up assessment of Genji. And of the meta. Han saying publicly that he's not comfortable on Zaya? Bro, these players need to learn how to shut the fuck up. Really? We continue. NRG versus G2. Belveth on 5. NRG did... NRG did to G2 what G2 did to everybody else. Kaiser blind into fucking Senatam. And they didn't even play Senatam that great. But it doesn't matter because it was so polarizing. NRG very cohesive draft. Deny Nico from the from the enemy. Right? And then they go Kesante Vai. Another champion that Vai, Wukong, these are not champions that, of course, Yike likes, which is another flaw, right? The Senatam was solid. But draft wise, this is very losing. NRG performed super, super fucking good. But I think Belveth is insanely out of place here. Insanely out of place. Right? We're going to game two. Zaya gets first picked. Draven, Kalista, Viego ban. Here I think Oriana ban was stolen from NRG. They didn't want to trade Zaya Oriana. They didn't want to give Zaya, right? This was also strange to me. Uh, I don't know how you do this draft, right? I don't know how you do this draft. And then your conclusion is to do this the next day. 
This is what's so weird to me. All right? So once again, right, the flaw of not being able to play Jarvan and also not banning Jarvan, not inviting Oriana and not having room to ban something additional, right? So it's like they're in the headspace here where they want to play Zaya, they want to set up the Zaya, and they are too scared of giving up Maokai because they don't have the answer of Javan into Maokai. So this is where the flaw of the champion pool really, really like makes itself clear, right? Very clear. The enemy picks Rakan, Javan, Rumble, they get a clean silver on five, and then Talia. Keep in mind, this series was not only draft related, because I think that NRG outperformed the enemy way harder. Way, way harder. I'm not going to speculate on whose decision is what. I'm going to judge G2 for the team they are, and then on the individual basis on what we're seeing in the fucking server, this is what I am going to uh, analyze. Why they are picking something is is not on 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 that topic, right? G two versus Billy Billy, they sack a game against fucking Zaya and Jax. They could have created this Maokai Kogma Brom scenario really really easily, and still be just the same champs against better champs. They could have invited the enemy to pick Kaiser, and they could have countered that. Next one up, Jax, Zaya, Alistar. Not sure about this Alistar ban, but this draft, I think that Billy Billy blundered. Here, Billy Billy showcased something that was a, is a flaw of theirs, right? Here, you want to be able to pick Java Oriana, right? But they didn't. The jungler wanted to pick Maokai, and here, if G2 played Jarvan, it would have been fucking rocking, right? It would have been a rocking. It would have been nice. But here, both teams don't want to play Jarvan. And then here, in game three, Billy Billy says, Yo, can you just fucking play Jarvan, bro? Can you first time Jarvan? Because this is literally what Shun did. He hasn't played Jarvan. These are some of the flaws, right? I think in the grand scheme of things, right, if, if I look at things at the, as a whole, I think that as a, as a whole, right, what was, what was G2 missing, right? Caps and Mickey are elite level players. It doesn't mean that a player like Yike cannot become an elite level player. Same thing for Hans Sama, same thing for, of course, Broken Blade. They are great players. They deserve to be in the LEC. They are top three, 100%. They're fucking great. But we're talking about a world where you need to break through. And you're always going to carry that risk. You're always, always going to carry that risk because you won't know until you actually test the waters. Right? You won't know until you test the waters. Yike played the rookie year. He did a fucking fantastic job. G2 as a whole did a fucking fantastic job. Right? G2 did a really fucking great job this year. It's really, really not something that you can take away from. Because they had a bad tournament here. A bad tournament. And sometimes that's the fucking case. The patch doesn't align correctly. You don't have the great good read. And then all of a sudden you fall behind. And you're falling against behind against fucking demons. Truly demons. The thing is, Donna Waldo, what you, what your pea-sized brain can't comprehend, right? Sorry, that was a bit rude. You have to put the context of the competition in mind. Genji is a fucking strong-ass team. Billy Billy, the rise through Spring Split to then qualify to MSI, they were fucking demons. The invitation of Tabe, fucking demons. JDG, strongest roster fucking created ever. The competition is fucking harsh.
But this tournament was a disaster for G2 because they did get a draw that they should have won. And that is the thing that is the most disappointing. But the effort that G2 put in and what they did a, a year as a whole is still fucking positive. You can't look at the result and say what they did throughout the year is, not, is, is wrong due to the result. Because a lot of things are at play when it comes to the result. A lot of things. And I've highlighted a lot of them. And the result is very, very disappointing. Because they had a draw here that they should have fucking taken. And should have won against NRG. But NRG... They seized the opportunity and fucking smacked the shit out of them. And that's the nature of competition. And to bring it back to the scrim point, right? To bring it back to the scrim point is scrims do fucking matter, but the results of them don't. That is the fucking thing that people are missing. Scrims matter a shit ton. Because this is where you played the majority of your fucking games the whole fucking year. But the results of them don't matter. What you get out of them and what your purpose was and what information you gain and how you grow as a team is what matters. It is training. But in that training you need to perform. So it's very likely that G2 got a lot out of the scrims. It was very likely that they got a lot out of their scrims still. Because they were winning and they were really, really fucking trying hard on them. But there's going to be very different approaches to scrims. It's like, let's say from G2's side, right? Maybe they needed to run it down a little bit with Javan, Rumble and fucking Zaya. Maybe this is what they needed to do in order to win. And maybe this would have been so much better for them. Maybe. But I'm just speculating, right? Maybe they needed to run it down with some fucking champs that they needed to add to the pool, right? Maybe they needed to use their scrims to create more depth in their draft, right? The point is, the community that says right now that their conclusion is that scrims don't fucking matter based off of G2 posting their results and just showing their effort after the end of the year, I think that's troll. But it's also same troll to say, wow, G2 beat JDG in scrims. That must make G2 better than JDG. And they just couldn't perform on stage. We don't know what the fucking attitude JDG has in scrims or what they are trying to achieve in scrims. I can tell you as well, LPL teams. LPL teams, they fucking hide everything. They say, fuck you. I'm going to fucking blind pick Fiora every fucking game. I won't play it on stage, but fuck you. G2 2019. Bro, we were winning scrims against fucking G2 2019. They were fucking goofballs. They were fucking goofballs. Scrims should be about limit testing. Now that's wrong too. Because you can't fucking predetermine what scrims should be because the necessity of each team is very different. Very different. And I want to separate two things. G2 were highlighting scrims at first to fucking point out that fucking pieces of shit teams are cancelling scrims. And I think that was a really good thing. G2 set a higher standard in Europe and this was a massive positive. At the end of the year, I think Romain shared it because he wanted to highlight how fucking hard these guys work their ass off. Even though I don't like it because it puts a narrative out about the teams that they scrimmed against. That is out of the control of the teams. I would not reveal this. I would not reveal this. I would say scrims are doing good and I would hide the names that we scrim against. Because it's unfair to put that narrative out about teams. I don't like that. But I think the purpose of why Roma did this, he wanted to highlight 
We fucking worked our ass off. We worked our ass off. Who cares what you pick as long as you can control lanes perfectly and get every single dragon and scrims? Fucking first time chatters, man. These fucking stupid ass takes, man. What the fuck does that even mean? He doesn't fucking understand that. Like, it doesn't matter. Like, that strength of your champion limits the potential of what perfect means. I can play perfect with Soraka and I would always lose against Binjax. Doesn't matter how good I am. I could play at the perfect level. I could play at AI. It doesn't matter. Because the, the idea of what perfect is is non existent. Champions matter, brother. Of course they matter. But I think G2, these two weeks that they played was a massive disaster. And it's like if we isolate, it's like Yike just had a poor tournament. I think that in Europe, he built some fucking bad habits where, where I think that he got away with a lot of mistakes here in Europe. And that's why I put Razurk above Yike, because I think that he was covered for a lot of his mistakes. And those mistakes were not fucking allowed. I think that there were moments that were good from Yike, there were moments that were bad. I think that it was the third best performer. Right? I think that Hans Sama, his reliance on specific champions became a detriment. It was something that was quirky and nice, similar to Adam with his champions, but then we have a situation now where after those champions fall behind and they are banned, then there was no additional layer to it. I think this is the, this is the key, right? When you have a player like Hans Sam, you have a player like fucking uh, like fa fucking Adam. You need to have you need to practice the evolution of the answer to you, and then you will have an edge. Then you will have an edge. But they were not strong in the evolution after the bans. Reckless problem? No. Like Reckless, you know, Reckless, when he was at his peak, when Reckless was at his peak, he was really fucking good at knowing these are the champions I can impact, have impact on. It was one, two, three, four. And then he played these champions over and over again. It got to the point later on when AD carries were no longer AD carries, and this is where Reckless felt the most pain. When AD carries had nuance to them, that's where he felt the pain. When one of your AD carries is Jin, it will be, you will be in games where you're fucking useless. That was something that was painful for Reckless. But, in the end, I want to say, I praise G2 for what they've done this year. I praise for the setup they've, they've done. I praise them for the effort that they put in. I praise them for the hard work that they put in. The result at the World Championship just doesn't reflect that. Their performance at the World Championship doesn't reflect that. But that doesn't say, doesn't mean that some of the things that they did throughout the entire year were wrong. And I think it's important to have that said. It's like, sure, it's like, you know, sometimes it's like, I feel like a part of me wants to say, yo, yo, maybe like play uh, community, please don't be mean to these players. But the thing is, this is just the game. This is the nature of it. Anything where emotions are high, when people are fucking angry and upset and fucking fuming and just saying spiting nonsense, that means fucking esports is alive. Esports is fucking alive. The thing is, you don't get paid to fucking, you don't get fucking paid to play the game. You get paid to deal, deal with the crap. You get, you get paid to deal with the bullshit. If there's bullshit, it means people care in the most stupid ways. 
And I think that's fucking great. It's like, it was this whole thing, right? We can move on to Fnatic, right? With this guy called Express Lol. Like, this guy is such a fucking buffoon. You know? This guy is such a buffoon, man. This, such a buffoon, man. All he does is fucking clickbait the shit out of this, okay? Wait, he got banned or what? He doesn't have access to his account. He doesn't have access to his account. Look, it's fucking 2022 tweets. He, he fucking... He, he. Bro, why is my fucking Twitter Arabic now? You need to log in? No way, I have to log in. Ah, fuck yourself. Nah, blood. Point is, right? Like, for example, he was talking about the fucking Alistair pick. He was talking about the Alistair pick. Like, wah ha ha, Trimby wanted this pick, right? And he doesn't fucking understand shit about the game. And Trimby re replied to that, right? Trimby replied. And I'm like thinking to myself, you know, it's like, sure, you can reply. Bro, I don't get, I don't see the answers, bro. I can't fucking believe it, man. I can't believe it. But it's like, Tromboner. The one thing I didn't like about what Tromboner. What, the one thing I didn't like about Trombona's answer was that he's like, you're going to make me never want to pick a champ again. It's like, what the fuck are you saying, bro? You can't fucking let these fucking Muppets have fucking impact on your fucking decision making, bro. You guys are putting so much effort to make sure I don't want to ever to play the game with my pick. What the fuck? What the fuck does that mean, Trimby? Fair play, bro. Fair play to dunk on him. This is good. Every pick that I go there has a counter that makes lane almost impossible to play or makes very little to sense into enemy comp. This is fair play. Fair play, man. Fair play. But it's like, Diego has putting so much effort to make sure I don't want to ever to play the game, bro. Oh, if, if, if fucking people get affected, bro. It's the same. It's like, imagine now. I'm like, okay, guys. I, I didn't ban Yumi, and now fucking the community hates me, I get death threats, and now I'm gonna be like, oh, if the community wants me to ban something, I'm going to ban it because I'm scared. Come on, man. No, bro. I had fucking conviction, I stand by the fucking Yumi open, and I can explain it to this day. But, fair play for him to dunk on him, because Express's point is fucking dumb as fuck. He, Trimby is not the fucking issue here. Right? Alright. Fnatic at the World Championship. Right? Fnatic had a relatively tough draw. Let's be honest. They had a tough draw. Let me see if uh, Tifa has written me. She has not. Okay. Then we're fine. Re relatively tough draw. I'm going to ask Elena to make food for me. Angel, do we have food at the house? Can you bring me? All right, so Fnatic had a tough draw. I didn't expect them to make it out of this draw. LNG versus Fnatic, fair play. They were competitive in this one. Fair play, right? Actually, no, they weren't. I'm confusing LNG C9. C9, LNG C9 was the competitive. This was not competitive. They didn't flash to combo their jacks, and they fucked up. Their draft is way weaker. Okay. They were learning about the game and they had Ezreal. This was not a close game at all. I, I forgot. This was a shit game. They, they, they Very bad meta read. Okay? Very bad meta read. Uh, but we continue. Okay? Very bad meta read. We continue. Fnatic versus Gam. Easy peasy. Easy draw. Uh, they deserved a little nice one. Right? They needed to face some losers. I think the odds of them having a bad draw here was relatively low. It was just DK and KT... That, like, KT had the worst draw possible, I think. Really, really worst draw possible, KT. Uh, but the fact that K Damwon and KT drew each other was the saving grace, right? Fnatic could draw Gum, 
or they could draw TL, NRG, Madden versus BDS. And at this point in time, I think that Fnatic should, be, should have been capable of beating everybody. Keep in mind, NRG didn't look good. They didn't look good in their losses. They didn't look in their games up until the point where they beat G2. Right? Even in the game against Mad that NRG played, that was a terrible game. This was a disgusting game. And Mad could have won this one. I assure you. This was a terrible game. So, we continue. Fnatic had an easy draw and then they followed by Billy Billy draw. Right? In this game as well, Fnatic is, have strong individual players, but they're never going to play a game without inaccuracies. That's how I describe Fnatic. A very strong individual team, but they're always going to play ga the game with inaccuracies, and they need to have room in the draft that allows them to do so. And that's a big ask. That is a big ask. Very big ask. NRG didn't look good against TL. The thing is, the regional matchup, they did look good. First time chatter. But the regional matchup mattered a lot less. That's the key thing. It's a regional matchup. Right? So you don't educate yourself so much based on the energy's gameplay against the TL. Right? In this game, I believe Palafox solo killed fucking Syndra level 4. And then it was over. Right? But, but fair, fair, NRG did play good against Team Liquid. We continue. Fnatic versus Gum. So this was another tough draw, and they played a draft here with Akali that didn't allow them to make mistakes. Where did Fnatic find success? When they had Mages mid, and when they had Aphelios on AD, and they had played front-to-back compositions, very similar to how we were at Worlds last year, right? And Fnatic lost against Billy Billy because they had inaccuracies. They have players that play at a very high level, but Trimby is the type of player that sometimes makes crucial mistakes. Humoroid as well, sometimes dies in spaces where he shouldn't die. Same thing for Razork, sometimes he fucks shit up, right? Well, but when things look right, this is where they can take games against the best and they have really strong moments, right? They had very good moments in this game because mechanically this is a team that can compete, even with G2, right? Humanoid, Razork, these are elite level players in my mind, right? And Trimby Oscarini uh, can maybe crawl the way up there on a good day. Noah needs some work. If he's playing Aphelios in a good draft, he can definitely be that guy, right? But once again, tough draw. Why do you think Fnatic has these inaccuracies? In the pursuit of more, you can get inaccur inaccurate. The same way it's like, when people say, why the fuck is this player dying to this obvious gank? It's because he's trying to achieve more and make the enemy lose more, right? In the pursuit of perfect play, you need to dance on a very thin line between inting and playing insane. Humanoid should work on that. It's not that hard to fix. Uh, humanoid, like for example, Humanoid in the series against fucking... Humanoid against fucking... The, the in this series against Zhao, he was way better than Zhao in this series. Let's be honest. Hey, eh? that's why, like, even the greatest players sometimes run it down. But okay, so Fnatic against C9. In the first game, Fnatic, they took a gamble. They thought enemy team doesn't play Rumble and they got fucked in the bum for it, right? Plain and simple, that's okay, right? It's the best of three. You educate yourself. Enemy first pick Zaya, you trade Oriana Rakan for it. That's, that's a setup. But it becomes three for two if the enemy is willing to play fucking Java Rumble, right? It was Java Rumble or OP. And they banned Sejuani here because they thought enemy wants to play Sejuani Jax here. And the thing is, the read was not wrong because they turned out that it turned out they wanted to play that, right? Right? But it's just that they misread the rumble. Now, uh, we look at how they got educated. They went to blue side.
For G2, do you think it was a problem that they got too much used to winning that they can't handle a loss? No. This is some fucking crazy speculation, mate. So, they misread the rumble. We continue into this situation. C9 now on red. They want to deny enemy Oriana, of course. And here, rumble is out from blue. And then Zaya. And then here, it was very weird to me. Very troll. Very fucking troll, C9. They didn't pick Javan away. Because, in their mind, they were afraid of Poppy. But he has C9. They're not even... They're afraid of something, but they're not capable of playing it. So if they pick Kessante Talia, imagine they pick Poppy here on 3. Imagine they pick Poppy on 5. Just pick Poppy, damn it! It's just making the poppy juicier and juicier and juicier. And maybe Fnatic's run could have ended here. But they flipped that the enemy played no poppy. The same way they flipped that the enemy doesn't play rumble. No poppy. No poppy here. Crazy to me. Nevertheless. Syndra, they get Javan, Jax into Javan, into Talia as fucking beautiful, and then Kaisa, and then Rel, Renekton, and they have Zeri Rakan, fine lane on bot, even, and then topside is just stronger, I think, right? So the nice. C9 uh, had a decent Kisante game here into the Syndra mid, but uh, I think that uh, basically here, I think Oscarinin just played fucking better. Can someone explain why Poppy is better than Talia? No one's saying it's better than Talia. The thing is, her rocks are not real. Because they don't ground you. So if you have mercs, you can EQ through them and R, and then Talia is defenseless. That's why Javan is good, right? But here, we want to combine Talia and Poppy, because it's a very good combo, very good combo, and the enemy just wants to dash and play, and they are not picking Poppy, that's why it's so confusing, right? Apart from setting up fights, really, well, don't you think Talia's damage is mega useless? She's very item reliant, and she needs very long fights, she doesn't have any upfront burst, and uh, she needs very long fights. She has very low cooldowns, but her, like, squeeze is very weak, you know? Nevertheless, we continue. Here's C9. They locked in Zaya first pick. And now Fnatic, they said, fuck you. We are going to slam the Rumble Javan. And this was brilliant. They had to do so. There was no trade here for them, and they had to do so. If Oriana was open, they would look to open Rakan and ban Rumble instead, and then play Oriana Rakan. Plain and simple. But here, they went the Rumble Javan, and I think out of this draft, they came out winning. They could pick Aphelios, put up Noah in a position where he is very happy to play right into Aphelios, into Zaya. And then they picked the Silas on 5 with the Alistar, right? And at the time, I thought that Rel was not the greatest pick here. I thought that picking uh, the other champs is better, but after the enemy got baited into Alistar. So they blind pick Rel to bait the Alistar, and then to pick Silas on 5. Very, very well done here by Fnatic, you know? Fnatic is a team that seems to, like, evolve well throughout the series, you know? They evolved well throughout the series, and that's what made them beat C9 on the day, right? Very nice. Now Fnatic came out of this, they're playing the 2-2 series. Fnatic started off super well. This draft is way better, way more overcooked, right? Weibo completely lost her mind. Completely lost her mind in this draft. This was really fucking well done by Fnatic draft-wise. Right? This is where something was a little bit counterintuitive because I think that Fnatic actually had a good draft here. Right? They had a good draft here, but the thing is, this draft needs to play insanely precise. You can't make mistakes. And the thing is, 
if you play against a team that is on paper better than you, and they are, Weibo on paper is better than Fnatic. You cannot draft yourself in a position where you are not allowed to make mistakes. But it's a tough thing to balance. Very tough thing to balance. Because you don't want to put yourself in a situation where you overscale and then you're just at the mercy of the enemy team and you get fucked before you can even play the game. Right? It's a tough thing to balance because inherently on paper you're worse. Right? But nevertheless, they need to ban Nico because they don't play it themselves. And if the enemy first picks Nico, they can't pick Maoka because Maoka is pretty bad against Nico. Right? And they went the Callisto route, and Renata Felios got picked. And I think that I think that Fnatic's bot lane like was was a really weak point, you know. Unless Noah played the Felios, so I didn't like putting things in the Callisto basket. I think this was a mistake. I think that they should have invited the Felios cases, um, but they were afraid of Renata Callista, I believe, because this is something that Fnatic showed in other games too, right? Callista ban, Callista ban, Callista ban. Alistair Billy Billy band, they band Zaya. Here, no Kalista band because it's GAM. LNG band Kalista. Okay. And then looking at the final game, they recognized the flaw of their AD and they felt the need to pick Aphelios. They thought to themselves, if we don't pick Aphelios, enemy will, and we'll have to play Zeri and Ezreal, and we'll be weaker. And um, and that's the plan. If you're a team that has better AD pool, then you're going to first pick Maoka here. And it would have been better. But they just didn't. They go Maoka, Azir. Humanoid goes Silas. And they pick Sejuani. In isolation. Hmm. Not first time chatter. Let's see. Let's see what. Well, let's see what this homie has written. I have marijuana deficiency. Edge. Some people think they did it. It's Burger King. Holy, this guy is just fucking posting. Big brother. Um. Yeah. I won't ban him because it sucks to be him. Um, right, let's continue. Uh, point being here, right, is uh, Weibo kept this gun in the, in the back of their mind and Fnatic really revealed their hand with the Aphelios. They recognize this guy can only play Aphelios. They, th they thought to themselves, what can we actually pick into it? And um, if they were aware, right, it's like Light, Caitlyn, is something that is fairly known, I guess. Let's just pull up Game of Legends. Caitlyn is also one of those champions that it's surprise Like, the teams that have played it and practiced it will have an edge, plain and simple. Uh, wrong Light. If you look at Caitlyn, that's one game. Let's look at him all, all, all year or lifelong. So Caitlyn, it's 13, 13 games. That's like 11 and 11 and two. Pretty fucking solid, if you ask me. 11 and two. Let's see when those games happened. If it's season 12, season 12, Caitlyn five, four and one, and then Caitlyn here, I imagine as well. Well, no Caitlyn here actually. There is the Caitlyn, two wins. It's like, you know, you know, it's like they missed this, you know, 30 KDA this year is kind of mad.
here, it's like they should have known, you know. It's rough, you know. It's it's like you it's, it's it's rough when you lose a game in a way where you should only lose it once. But that's the beauty of the game, right? The Jinx ban, like they're banning ADs. The banning ADs, Aphelios is good against. That's like the biggest troll about this, right? I think that's what makes this so fucking terrible. Is that Aphelios is good against Callista Jinx. And they ban them. That's some cuckery, you know? But if you look at Fnatic's year as a whole, right? It's like they started off really, really bad. Roxanne and Reckless didn't work. Reckless and Advian was poor. And, you know, maybe in a world where Nexus was fucking hit, maybe they go further in playoffs and they don't make the changes and they don't make worlds. That's definitely, like, real, right? And, uh, but instead, they managed to get saved by Noah Trimby. That's, like, fantastic GMing. Like, whatever fucking magic you can pull off between fucking spring and summer that you can pull in Noah. And um, and Trimby into your team out of fucking nowhere and trade Trimby for Advien. That's like the heist of the century. And um, yeah, I think that Fnatic, all things considered, I think that they, they did well. They did well. I think the biggest disappointment is still winter and spring, right? It's like they had Wunder on the roster, they had Upset on the roster, and it managed to all fall to shit, you know? And I think that's the biggest disappointment, right? That the start of the start of it was very, very poor in terms of the setup. And then they tried to get the Amato Cannon back in spring, but he declined. Uh, these these things were uh, reflect poorly on Fnatic, you know? Why did it decline? I said the only way I would do it is because if, if I get full rain and some other conditions that I don't want to mention and then I ask for a lot of fucking money, an absurd amount of money. Mm. I told them, it's like, I, I want a big sack of money. That's the only way I accept it. But yeah, I, I think Fnatic, considering Summer and their playoffs run and the position they were in to beat out Matt, I think that's good. I think that's good. Yeah, Mauro, if you drafted for G2 and Fnatic, uh, would you have done better? The thing is, I don't know what kind of fucking confusion they are dealing with on the inside, you know? Uh, it's easier for me to see the flaws and uh, the trends of these teams looking at it from outside without the convolution of opinions and perspectives that uh, are ingrained in emotions. But from outside, it's very easy for me to see things. Maybe internally, they just have like shampoo limits or like emotional arguments as to why they don't want to play something or why they want to play something. It's like... I can tell you this, right? If, if I'm working with a team, you don't fucking walk into this tournament you don't fucking walk into this tournament without playing these fucking champs. That's for fucking sure. <laughs> 